Danielle Flores is suing her former friends, Priscilla Ortiz and Jessica Aguirre, for false arrest, car damages, and emotional distress. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 3102, Flores versus Ortiz Aguirre. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, my God, this is a like a series, like a 10-part series, so I have to try to simplify it. Miss Flores, you and these two ladies used to be friends. Correct. And between the three of you, you have seven children? Um, all together, about, yeah. <laughs> and the three of you have been friends for a while, and on September 1st mm -hmm. of 2022, the three of you, along with your boyfriend, were hanging out at whose house? My house. With all the children? Yes. And you had to go out for a little while, according yes. to what you said. I don't know where. Tell me where you went. I went to see a friend. She needed me. There was some urgent. I was gone for 30 minutes. So you went out for a little bit. And when you came back, according to what I read, you found that your boyfriend and these two gals mm -hmm. were drinking. Yes. And you and the boyfriend sort of got into it. Correct. Excuse me. Ch Sorry. Um... It's incorrect that she was only gone for 30 minutes. Let's say she was gone for two hours. It was two hours. Great. Good guess. Thank Let's you. say she was gone for two hours, so you were drinking for two hours and not just... Well, her girlfriend, we was... started at the pool. Okay. And you threw him out. Yes. And the two of you left as well. One of you took the boyfriend yes. home with them. That's me. Yep. That would be you. Mm -hmm. And when you brought the boyfriend home with you, according to you, he was upset and you wanted to console him. Yeah. Well, you consoled him. Mm -hmm. I bet. He's now your husband. Yes. <laughs> and then on September 25th, Miss Flores was at a local bar. The bar that Priscilla and I Shh, I don't want you to shout out anymore. Do you understand? That's fine. And it doesn't help you. That's fine. She was at a local bar. And after she arrived, you two arrived. Is that correct? Yes. Had you ever been to that bar before? This is the first time. Why did you pick that bar? Because it was far from my city, about 20 minute drive. I figured somewhere a little farther so I won't bump into the girls and then bumping right into them. <laughs> so what you're saying is you did not know that this was a place where they yes. frequented. Yes. Okay. Who takes care of all your little children when you're out bar hopping? At this very- Just a sh Oh, sorry. I'm just asking a question. I, that's a name. Who takes care of all your children when you're out bar hopping at night? I have a co-parent, so at that time, it was my co-parent that was taking care of my children. And what about you? Who's my family. Which family? My siblings, my older siblings. I live at home with my dad, so he's home with them. Anyway, after you were there for a while, the two of them came in, and according to you, you decided to leave, that there was some bad air in the air, and you decided it wouldn't be a good idea. You went to leave, and according to you, they followed you outside. Yes. Your car was parked there? Right in front. Okay. So now I've set the stage. Now you tell me what happened when you left the bar. Um, I didn't really want to continue staying there after seeing the girls. I felt uneased um, before I left. I noticed the girls were getting rowdy. Um, the security then asked them to leave. Um, the girls I did see in the corner of my eye walking across the street as security was yelling at them, leave or whatever they were talking about. So were about. they outside or were they? They were already going outside. They were, they were outside. pushed outside, yes. By security? Correct, yes. Okay, and you're still inside? Yes. Shh, just for my own curiosity, why didn't you stay in the bar when they were pushed out? Why did you leave? I just felt uncomfortable. I couldn't... Well, they I weren't... Mm -hmm. You understand my question? Yes. The threat was gone. Mm -hmm. They were now outside the bar. Why don't you stay in the bar? I wanted to leave. Only the reason being is because it was getting closer for me to pick up my children. I felt it was best for just me to leave, and I was really not having fun. What time was this? This was about... It was getting close to midnight, so probably about 11.30ish. Oh, okay. So now it's midnight. And how old are your children? My daughter's 10, and my son is 5. And they were with whom? The co-parent, my ex-husband. And you were going to pick them up at midnight? <laughs> no, I, was, I would make sure I picked them up in the morning, but I wanted to go home, rest, and so forth. I'd, so I, you weren't going to pick your children up? You, not right away, no. That's, no, okay. That's... So there was no urgency for you to leave at that moment? Yes. Just setting the stage for where we're at. So now you're outside and you go outside, and your car is parked right in front. Yes. Keep going. Um, I went outside to leave. I opened the driver door, 
As soon as I open the drive-thru door, Priscilla Ortiz jumps right in front of me in the vehicle. That would be you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not yep. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Better. Sorry. <laughs> I was confused. I said, what are you doing? She goes, you're not leaving. You're not going anywhere. As soon as that was said, I see in the corner of my eye was Jessica, and I felt other people around me. I then felt people pushing me and tugging me, and there is ongoing traffic right there. I was very scared. And then I had um, on my purse, it's a cell phone, my debit card and so forth, and I have a key little weapon for self-defense that I do carry with me. That little weapon I had, and I told Priscilla, stay away from me. And I had it right in her front, I go, stay away from me. She lunged after me, and I did stab her with it. Then, How many times? From my understanding, twice at least. I don't think it was any more than that. She didn't have a weapon. No, she did not. But I had prior restraining order before that. Uh, she has been taught to me be before that. I don't but care. She didn't have a weapon. You're right. And you stabbed her. Yes. As a matter of fact, you stabbed both of them. Yes. OK, so now you stabbed Priscilla at least twice. Correct. Where had you stabbed her? I believe on the back. So she was still active doing what? Yelling at me. She yelling was, yeah, at you? Yes. OK. And what did you do when she was yelling at you? I backed up and I told him, let me leave. Get out of my way. I want to leave. As I opened the driver door, Priscilla came right between me and the car. And? Learned, just and? Then she started yelling at me, saying, you're not yes. going anywhere. Yes, and? So then I backed away because other people were pulling and? me back. Then Jessica came and lunged at me. And that's when I lunged at her. And I did hurt her. And then I was trying to leave the situation. The girls were in front of me, and I squeezed through and jumped into my vehicle because the door was already open. After I seen Jessica... Well, that, what, you uh -huh. stabbed only one. When did you stab the second one? When I was being pulled, I stabbed. But I didn't know it was Jessica at the time. But I did stab some as I was being pulled back. You stabbed her in the neck? Yes. Danielle Flores claims her former friends, Priscilla Ortiz and Jessica Aguirre, Oh, for car damages and emotional distress. Priscilla and Jessica are countersuing for injuries received when Danielle stabbed them. Now, then you get into your car. Correct. And? I got into the car. I drove, uh, before I drove off, the car was going back and forth. I looked in the back window. I noticed that someone was breaking my windshield wiper, breaking the front of my windshield wiper. Who was that? It was Jessica's uh, cousin or niece. She was there. She was breaking the windshield wipers and so forth. And then? I drove off. I drove two streets away and I called the police on myself. So what are you suing them for? Somebody else damaged your car. I have recordings of Jessica opening my driver door and kicking the steering wheel. OK, I would like to hear that recording. Yeah. OK. See on the phone. I, know where her I didn't was. see anybody kicking your steering wheel. Kicking the inside of my car, if you know. I didn't see anybody kicking inside of your car. You want to play that again? Yes. Maybe I missed it. It's right here. You see Jessica, she's moving a lot. She's actually kicking the inside of my, the inside of my uh, vehicle. OK. And then she gets out. Correct. OK. And so I want you to show me the damage she did to your steering wheel. Yes. Because then you say you drove away. So you clearly drove away, and the car was functioning. Let me just get this clear, Miss Flores. Yes. By the time she went in and kicked your car, yes, and then she got out of the car, and you got in and drove away, you had already stabbed both of them with a weapon, which neither one of them had, mm -hmm. when one of them tried to prevent you from leaving by kicking your steering wheel. I, am I getting this right? Yes, you are, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So let me understand this. You had a confrontation with two unarmed people. You stabbed them both. You suffered no physical injury. They're going to show me, because I had seen photographs in gear of their injuries. One required 13 stitches. One required several staples as a result of I being... I got 30 stitches. And you think that was OK? I was self-defensing myself out of previous events of them constantly harassing me, Your I Honor. I don't care. I restraining orders Who? against them. They kept harassing me. 
listen to me. You can't use a deadly weapon against somebody because you feel as if you're being harassed. But the first thing that was clear is, if they had been harassing you and they were told by security in the bar to leave for whatever reason, because nothing happened in the bar because you felt uncomfortable, you just felt uncomfortable that they were there, so maybe they were rowdy, who knows? But then they were escorted out of the bar Mm -hmm. And instead of you letting this situation sort of resolve and staying for a half hour until they left, you decided to leave at the exact same time as they were escorted out or moments thereafter because you wanted to get home and take a nap before you had to go pick up your children early in the morning. Am I getting that right? You are, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> get out of here. You have a counterclaim. Yes, yes. And your counterclaim is for being stabbed. Yes, Your Honor. I would just like to know... There was a trial on this? Yes. Against her? Against her. Was it a jury trial? Well, we weren't really involved in anything for it. We got, like, phone calls, but they pretty much told us, like, you don't need to go to court because there's nothing to do other than we already have your statements. Did you have a lawyer? Because you were arrested for assault. You had to be arrested for assault. Yes. This was serious physical injury. I did. One of them was in the neck, you know, <laughs> but for the grace of God, it could have hit an artery. It could have been dead. What happened with that case when you were arrested? It got dismissed. I want to see a certificate of disposition. I want to see what happened. This is where it's dismissed. Those were the ones that were for dismissal. I have to know more about this. I have the police report of that. No, I don't want the police okay. report. I want to know what happened in court that caused it to be... Was it dismissed? Did you take a plea and do community service? No. Did you, well, what happened? They dropped it because I had a restraining order and previous events with Jessica and Priscilla. Where does it say that here? When we were at court, they didn't show up multiple times. The court last... I didn't get my uh, release until November... I was out on OR until November 22nd. Okay. I asked you to show me a picture just for closure. For the vehicle. Kevin, would you just show me pictures of the steering wheel that she wants to show me? Yes, they're all in there. I uh, just steering wheel. No. Who wants to tell me what happened? Um, Your Honor, we were not escorted out of the bar um, the night everything happened on September 25th. So we were just in the front of the bar. We were not escorted out. Did anybody ask you to leave? No, nobody asked us How to How come leave. you decided to leave? You had just gotten there. We didn't leave at all. You didn't leave? No. Nobody asked us to leave. We didn't feel okay. any type of way of being Fine. There. So now you're at the bar. Mm -hmm. And? And so um, we had gotten our drinks, and we were already there for a while until we noticed that Ms. Flores was there. And so once we noticed that she was there, we still, you know, we were stayed. just like... Come, come, okay. come, 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 faster. And then faster. so we stayed, and towards the end of the night, which was already past 1.30, almost 2 is closing time. So we were still right there, and we were right there by the front of the bar. When Ms. Flores had walked past me, she had mumbled something. I and didn't. then I had asked her what she mumbled. Somehow we were going around her car and... Now, just so you're at the bar. How do you get around her car like when you're in the bar? She just parked, like, up. like she mentioned, she was parked in the front. So she was leaving. Follow me carefully. Danielle Flores is accusing her former friends, Priscilla Ortiz and Jessica Aguirre, of damaging her car and creating a false arrest. Priscilla and Jessica are countersuing, claiming Danielle stabbed them multiple times. She was leaving. She was leaving. Passing you in the bar. Yes, correct. And she was leaving. Then yes. she said something to you, mumbled something under her breath. Yes. You said, what did you say to me? Blah, blah, blah. Yes. She's still leaving. She goes outside. Yes. Did you follow her outside? No. Yes. Did you? I don't want to hear you. Did you go out after her? We were already You're just, in the front. I don't understand what you mean in the front. Well, because the front of the bar has an inside and outside. And the front has where you can, you know, kind of hang around. So that's where we were. But we were not escorted out. We were not. I didn't ask you whether you were escorted out. I'm trying to get a timeline. Right now, she well, passed she you. Well, she said we were escorted she out and we weren't. Did you understand what I just said to you? I'm yes. past that. 
Yes. Right now, all I'm dealing with, how much of this whole mess and getting stabbed was instigated by the two of you? That's what I'm trying to yeah. figure out. How much of it was your responsibility of getting involved with her? Because it doesn't look like the kind of person who would just take out a knife and stab you. <laughs> so now we're outside, and I want to find out how you got outside. She was going outside. Did you follow her to her no, car? Your Honor. How did you get to her car? We were already outside. You don't answer my question, I'm going to dismiss your case. Do you okay. understand that? Yes. That's easy for me. If something doesn't make sense, it's not true. You said you were at the bar. Yes. She passed you. You were sitting at the front, clearly towards the entrance, because you said it was half inside, half outside. Yes. So she was passing you on her way out. She mumbled something to you as you were at the bar. Yes. You said, what did you mumble? She's going out to her car. Mm -hmm. How did the two of you get to her car? Oh, uh, by From walking. the bar. By walking? Right after her. Yes. No, don't speak. You're right. Right after her. Mm -hmm. So that you followed her out of the bar. Yes. Okay. Why? Because she mumbled something and I wanted to confront what she mumbled and previously we're already having altercations. Well, then that would be, make you very stupid. Okay. That would make you very stupid to follow her out after you had had many altercations. You had been in the bar for a while. Everybody's mm -hmm. drinking. You mm -hmm. followed her outside. She was leaving. What about you? We were still inside. Priscilla goes and follows to where she's going with the guys that she was with. And then he starts to kind of like go towards Priscilla to grab her. Who sort of goes to Priscilla? The to... man that Miss Flores was with. Who was following her out of the bar. Yes. So he goes to prevent her from following her out well, of the bar. At that da -da. point? That would be a yes. Well, because they're both arguing with each other. That's OK. Yeah. She was following her out of the bar. Yeah, but she was just sitting there yelling at her. They're both yelling at each other. And then he. They wouldn't have been yelling at each other if she hadn't have followed her out of You're the bar. Right. Of course I'm right. So, so. So now they're yelling at each other. They're yelling at each other. and. To me, there's no reason for him to put his hands on her. So when her cousin and I saw that, we went up to confront him. We we're like, hey, you need to leave her alone because they've had altercations in the past. So we were like, hey, you need to leave her alone. Stay out of it. And then everyone starts arguing. Them two are arguing. We're arguing with the guy. And then everything gets moved over to her car. And then that's when everyone's yelling at each other. And then out of nowhere, she strikes me. And then there's so much going on. I look down and I felt wet and I just touched myself. My hands covered in blood. My outfit, as you could see in the video, was covered in blood. I hadn't touched her. We were arguing, but I have the police report here where she states that she did not have any injuries. And then her- Just a second. She didn't have any injuries. And there was no cause for her to stab either one of you, yeah. based upon what I saw, based upon what she told me. There was a lot of verbal screaming back and forth and screaming back and forth, but there was nothing that I heard or saw that suggested that in self-defense, she took out a knife and stabbed the both of you. Absolutely nothing. So, Ms. Flores, your case is dismissed, where you're asking for damages to the steering wheel. Yes. And on the counterclaim, I'm awarding the defendants $10,000 as they request. I have no idea why they dropped this case. Your Either your lawyer knew somebody, or the judge no, was taking the, a nap. There but you, there is absolutely no basis to use a deadly weapon. I was self-defending myself. I have restrainers. She keeps I, even to this day. Listen to your me. Your Honor. Listen to me. <laughs> Your Honor, please. I don't There's... care if you have restraining orders, madam. Don't you understand? You cannot use a deadly weapon when somebody is yelling at you. People that you know, people that you have a history yeah. with, you can't use a deadly weapon. And nothing in the story that you told me gave you reason to pick up a knife and use a deadly weapon. The history that you may have with them yes. is an entirely different thing. Please, let me please explain what happened previously to these events and the ongoing harassment that Priscilla still still taunts me. Listen to me. How if she I taunt taunts you, a restraining order on me? file a violation of the protective order. Okay. That's what you do. You don't stab them. I had it for self-defense because okay. I was so scared of them. That's my judgment. Your case is dismissed. Ten thousand dollars on the counterclaim. We're done. This court is adjourned.
I do feel scared to this day of how she torments me as well as her family members. We were all friends and then she's just not a good person that we wanted to be associated with. Uh, but Jessica, the fact that she did follow me outside the vehicle, I know a weapon was not a, a, a choice to have, but it was something that I felt unsafe with because of the constant of them um, harassing me prior to this event. I just looked down and I was covered in blood and I just I just started freaking out. It definitely no more seeing each other. I hope with definitely with the relocation within the apartments, it will be a better peaceful environment for me and Priscilla um, and definitely go from there. Justice was served because exactly. she didn't deserve I'm glad she was to take advantage of us again. I don't think I would have granted the defendants all of the money that they were seeking in their countersuit because in her story, when she was laying it out to you, she admitted that she knew that there was a restraining order against her held you by mean, the plaintiff. You mean the defendant? The defendant. So the second that they entered that bar and then realized that the plaintiff was there, they're under a le legal obligation to leave, and you did not leave. So yeah. therefore, I, I think that they, obviously, no one deserves to be stabbed. You cannot just stab That's, people. Yeah. That is not something you can do. But, but they were under an obligation. They were under a legal obligation, obligation to leave. To leave. Just not to say they should not have been compensated for being stabbed Absol under absolutely. the circumstances. She had, no, she had no basis, except that she said she had prior but harassment. They, there is a proper course of yeah. recourse for you when someone violates a restraining anyone. order, none of which includes stabbing. stabbing them in the neck. Biasoff <laughs> and Brandon Blanchard are suing Brandon's father, William Blanchard, for unpaid wages, property damage, and stolen belongings. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Hello, Gus. Case number 2028, Eliasoff Blanchard versus Blanchard. Thank you, Kevin. Welcome. Eliasoff? Yes, ma'am. That's you. How old are you? 19, almost 20. 19? Yes, ma'am. What do you do? I am a server. Since when? As of June of this year. This is your boyfriend? A fiance, yes, ma'am. Yes. Fiance. And how long has he been your fiance? Uh, for over a year. What does he do for a living? He is currently unemployed. When was the last time he had a job? That was about a year ago. What kind of work did he do a year ago? Warehouse work. Is there any reason that he hasn't worked in a year? He has uh, concussions and back injuries. And from what? From car accidents. From Does he cars. currently have any lawsuits pending with regard to those accidents? No, ma'am. So the accidents were your fault? No, they were the other people's faults. The other people had no insurance? The other person didn't have insurance at the time. So later on, he ended up stating that he did have insurance and got out of the ticket. Do you see a doctor regularly? Not anymore, no. I used to, though, until I ran out of my insurance for health insurance. And then the bill just kept stacking up on me. At that time, did you have an attorney? No, Your Honor. Did you ever have an attorney with regard to this? Did you ever consult an attorney with regard to these accidents? No. No. OK, fine. Is there any reason why you're not working? Yes, ma'am. I have bad back problems that I've had for quite some time. I have four discs out in my lower back. Mm -hmm. um, I also have knee injuries, shoulder injuries. I was uh, pushing my body more than I should have been. Mm -hmm. I was over 300 pounds working in a heated environment, working every day, and mm -hmm. I dropped all the weight. And then I ended up hurting myself even further from there. And then my doctor told me not to do anything over 20 pounds. So I went against her rules, and I did it anyways, and I kept injuring myself. What kind of work does your father do? He works as a U-Haul business associate and uh, mechanic as well. When did you live with your father? I lived with my father in January, I believe it was 8th. January of what year? Of 2021. 2022, sorry. After you have been disabled all this time yes. because of all the heavy work. Yes. Let me give a general outline of what this case is about. Yes, ma'am. You and your fiancé were living where? We were living with my father. No, before you lived with your father. My father. Her father. In what state? Wyoming. There come a time when your father either said it's enough or you decided that you were no longer happy in Wyoming? It was a conflict with his girlfriend that came about. Whatever it was. Yeah. If it was a conflict with his girlfriend, your mm -hmm. father told you to skedaddle. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And you called your father. No, I didn't call my father. Who did? My father called me. You mean just out of the blue? Yeah, he does it around. No, 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 no. Wow. He just called you at about the same time that your fiance's father told you to get out. Yes, is what I believe. Anyways, I've had a few concussions, Your Honor, and I don't remember a lot. Okay, we're going to get there. In any event, you had a discussion with your father that you didn't have a place to live, you didn't have a job, she didn't have a job, you had no money, her father was kicking you out of the house, and he drove cross country to get you. Yes, ma'am. In what month? 
Uh, it was in January. January of 2022. Yes, ma'am. How many miles did he drive to come and get you? I think a thousand miles, maybe. Each way? Each way, probably about 2,000 total, something like that. Okay, so he drove 2,000 miles to come and get you. Yes, ma'am. And then he brought you back to his house. Yes, ma'am. And you weren't working. Yes, ma'am. And the girlfriend wasn't working. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so if you weren't working, the girlfriend wasn't working, you had no money, so your father was taking care of your expenses. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. And now you're suing him. And you're suing him for a host of things, which I'm going to give you a relatively short time to tell me about. But one of the things that your girlfriend, excuse me, fiance says is that your father owes you for wages because you worked for him. Yes, ma'am. Doing what? I was doing U-Haul work, basically. What is U-Haul work? Oh, sorry. I'll explain. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, basically, what we do... Not is... basically. I don't want to hear basically. Sorry. I want to sorry. hear what you were doing. I would uh, hook up U-Hauls. I would also clean and inspect all the vehicles. Just a second. Hook up the U-Hauls. Hook up the U-Hauls. Clean and inspect them. Clean and inspect them. What does it involve in cleaning them? Uh, basically spraying down... Not all... basically. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry. We spray down all the... Not uh... we. You. Yeah, sorry. I spray down every single surface of the innards of the vehicle, basically the steering wheel, the floor vates, the radio, everything. And when you hook them up, explain how you hook something up. How I have to hook something up is just backing up, lining up with... Apple. So you have to drive? Yes, ma'am. And you're driving a car and backing up? Yes, ma'am. And so, then... you, so you're using a rear view mirror? Yes. And yourself? You're looking yes. to see where you're backing up because you have to use both? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then you hook them up. What else did you do for your father? I also did paperwork for him, doing like uh, inventory stocks and stuff like okay. that. Terrific. Basically, uh, not basically. I don't want to hear basically. Basically is a filler sorry, work. Sorry, ma'am. What else was I doing? I would sweep, clean up his shop. I basic. I would do a lot of things. Okay, for him. all while you were unable to do anything else. Yes, ma'am. I would. Well, uh, just a second. Uh, what all were you saying? after your back issues, after your concussions, after whatever other injuries that you had from working someplace. By the way, you don't have a lawsuit pending against anybody, do you? No, no. ma'am. So it's just a question of fetching, other than maybe trying to collect a disability somewhere along the line from the federal government. You were able to hook up U-Hauls, mm -hmm. clean them and sanitize them, sweep out the premises, do paperwork, mm -hmm. but you can't work. I mean, because part of the lawsuit is about all this work that you did. But all while you, you're telling me that you're unemployable because of all the injuries that you had. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, dokie. You understand how ridiculous that sounds to me. Yes. I only had one other case in my recent memory that sounded anywhere familiar to the story. And that was a man that was also receiving disability because he had a bad back. He was the plaintiff in a lawsuit suing someone because he had built them an outdoor patio deck alone. Hmm. Alone. And he wasn't paid the $6,000 for it. But he had been collecting disability for a back ailment for 31 years from the federal government. That sound odd to you? Yeah. Well, doesn't it sound odd to you that you're able to put hookups together and sweep and everything else, but you can't say, do you want a hamburger with your fries or fries with a burger? Yes, ma'am. That sounds peculiar to you. Right. So I don't want to hear about work. Okay, that's the first thing. And you lived in your father's house for how long, by the way? I think we only lived there for the first month. And then we ended up getting moved out to a camper for like the last bit of the, I think, two months that we were there. I don't know what you're suing for. You want to tell me? And Brandon Blanchard claimed Brandon's father, William Blanchard, owes for unpaid wages and stolen property. William is countersuing for moving expenses and property damage. Now, I'm not entertaining your wages because you can't work. That's what he just swore to. He can't work. That's why he's unemployed. He has four disc problems. I think he said four. Whatever. He can't work. Forget him now. I want you to tell me what you're suing this man who drove 2,000 miles to rescue you after your father threw you out. I want you to tell me what you think he owes you for. For the stolen property of my vehicle. What stolen property He's, of your vehicle? He stole my toolbox with the key with it and also parts that went to my vehicle. Did you take her toolbox? No, ma'am, I did not. <laughs> next! What's next? Whenever I confronted him about it... About what? About the toolbox when we went to go get my truck, then he would say what he just said, that he never took it. But yeah, when I asked him where did the key go for it, he denied he would just ignore that fact. Well, it's not a fact. It's not a fact unless or you can prove that he took your property. 
You said he just said to you, I don't have your toolbox. But I, my vehicle was on his property in his possession. Okay, and that's what you have. Your vehicle, while you were living there, was on his property, mm -hmm. and therefore he's responsible for the toolbox. Yes, ma'am. When he kicked us out, and then told us to come back for the truck, he was gonna give us two weeks to have it towed. And of course, the truck wasn't working, but he let the truck stay on his property for two weeks. Yes. What else are you suing him for? Just for the repairs on the vehicle. On what vehicle? On my truck, that whenever I went to go get the truck off his property after that two weeks, that's when the toolbox was missing, and I also looked under the hood, and there was wires hanging out, and those wires, I do have pictures. So and just a second. There was Let me ask you this question. You said, hey, you said he gave you two weeks to come and get your truck off his property. Mm -hmm. The truck was inoperable when you left it on his property. Mm -hmm. Wasn't running. No, ma'am. That's right. You did not come to get it off his property in two weeks. You came after the two weeks. Yes, ma'am. How much after the two weeks? I think just like a couple days after. We came back on April 23rd and we left the property April 6th. So it was after the two weeks? Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Yes, Your Honor. Here. Well, let's get there fast because I'm quickly losing patience with two ingrates. Here's the pictures. And I don't want to see any pictures of what? Of the truck? Of uh, the parts that were missing. I don't and, care. Uh, I don't care. After two weeks, he could burn that truck. It's on his property without his permission. Let's go. Move on. Your father came 2,000 miles to get you. He fed you for a month. He kept a roof over your head for a month. In return, you're suing him for nonsense. Let us move on. Yes, Your Honor. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Very good. Okay. Now, Mr. Blanchard. Yes, ma'am. You have a countersuit that actually you wouldn't have brought now because you didn't have an agreement with your son and his fiance when you went to get him. How many children do you have? Eight altogether. Prior to going to get him cross country, when had you seen him? Been several years. Tell me about the conversation when he contacted you. He said, Dad, I have no place to go. We can try to stay with her grandmother. Uh, I offered, said, I'll come get you if you have no place to go. And then? Within a week, I dropped everything to go get him. Now, when your son and his fiance came to you, sir, did you put him to work in your business? Yes, ma'am. And how long was he in your business? Altogether, maybe less than 90 days. Did he work in your business after they moved out of your house? He says they only lived in your house for 30 days. They were in the house 45 days, and then they were left another 45 days inside of a camper. Can you tell me why they moved into a camper? There was a chance of my daughter coming home, and they were living in her room at the time. And so I wanted to make sure they still had something, so I put them into a camper. Camper on your property? Yes, Your Honor. What kind of camper? Small camper. So they power. used the inside of the house to shower and yes, Your Honor. stuff, but they slept in the camper? Yes, Your Honor. All true? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And he paid for the camper. He paid for the electricity, water, et cetera, when you were in now. She wasn't working. Did he also pay for the food? Did you eat in the house or did you eat in the camper? Uh, no, ma'am. We were getting food stamps. So we paid for our own food. And we also helped them with their food as well. Why were you getting food stamps? Uh, for the short amount of time because he recommended to get on food stamps. Had you been on food stamps when you lived in Wyoming? No, ma'am. Okay. How did you support yourself there? I was working at the time. And what about him? A uh, driving company, basically. We go around, pick up food from places and deliver. So you were able to drive? Yes. Oh. For only a little with, bit. With all honor. those injuries. Amazing. Okay. I would like you to testify, sir, now to the conversation that you had with your son with regard to compensation for coming to pick him up in Wyoming. Be very careful what you say to me. I told my son before I picked him up, I said, you need to pay me back for this trip. Did you tell him what for the trip? I mean, Yes, for time? all expenses. All expenses for the trip. For the expenses? Yes, Your Honor. How was he supposed to do that? He wasn't working. He was supposed to get a nighttime job on top of working, helping me out around my shop. Did he help you around your shop? He you did. said about 90 days. Did you pay him? No, Your Honor. Well, if he worked for you for 90 days and you didn't pay him at all, and it cost you a couple of thousand dollars, according to you, yes, Your to Honor. go out and get him, hire trucks, spend time back, whatever it was, and he worked for you for 90 days without compensation. Why do you think he did that? I was hoping just because that's what he really wanted to do. No good deed goes unpunished. You went and you got him, and now they're suing you, but their case is dismissed. They have no case against you. It's all a bunch of nonsense and ridiculous. But likewise, sir, your counterclaim is for the expenses that you incurred in going to pick them up. I don't actually think that there was an agreement to pay you back for your expenses, but even if there was an agreement to pay you back 
for your expenses. The fact that he worked for 90 days without any compensation, I think, more than compensates you for that. As a result of that, your counterclaim as well is dismissed. We're finished here. This court is adjourned. You try to do your best for your kids whenever you can. This is no different. It's been very difficult growing up. I hope he gets his life together. I don't want anything to do with him. I'll always be there for him. It's time to cut the strings. I'm done with him. That young man sounded as if he was intelligent. That doesn't mean he was smart. That means he was intelligent. Because at age 19 or 20, to have already figured out that you can't work because you have a bad back unless you really have to work. Mm -hmm. If you really have to work, then you can work for your father. That's a bad mindset yeah. for a very young person. That means that your life is really going nowhere. You're not preparing yourself to do anything. And to take it a step further and to sue the only person that was there for you <laughs> in a time when you needed them. No good deed goes unpunished. Case number 2059, Dobson versus Jones, Point Dexter. All parties, please step forward. Clarissa Dobson is suing her sister-in-law, Kenesha Jones Poindexter, for a trip and wedding expenses. Miss Dobson, I assume this is your brother. Yes, it is, Your Honor. And this is his wife. That is correct. They're newly married. That's correct. When were they married? June of 2021, June 26. Were you at the wedding? Yes, I was. I was in the wedding. Wedding at your house? Wedding was at my home. This is the unfortunate circumstance that I read in your papers, which I hope to be able to resolve quickly. You've known the defendant for many, many years. Yes, that's correct. She became engaged too when she was getting married and they were planning a wedding, according to you. And Miss Poindexter, according to you, asked you to lay out certain monies for her for the wedding. That's correct. They were married. It was a joyous day, I gather. And then you asked her for the money back. Yes, that's correct. And she said, I never agreed to pay you any money. We're family. I've done things for you. You've done things for me. There was never an agreement for me to pay you. And your brother, he said, leave me out of this. Yep. I don't want to get involved with this. You two ladies take care that's of it. That's exactly what you said. Okay, well, it seems like a family matter, then more like a court matter. Lisa Dobson claims her sister-in-law, Kenesha Jones Poindexter, is responsible for trip costs and wedding expenses. You have your own home? Yes, that's correct. Tell me about your home. Nice home, got a lot of land around the property. How much? I would say probably a half an acre, which was big enough to put up two large tents 45 guest tables, chairs, the mayor, some police. It was nice. And there were certain things that you paid for. Yes, that's correct. You paid for a photographer? Yes, that's correct. How much? The photographer was $300, Your Honor. Okay, what else did you pay for? Because the party was held at the home, the wedding, excuse me, all the events pertaining to the wedding party had to take place at the home. Like what? So like when we had our bridal shower meetings, because also, Miss. Oh, you mean the meetings to plan the wedding? Right, to plan the I'm wedding. I'm not interested in You're that. You're not interested in I'm that? I'm not interested in that. Yeah, so far we have $300 for a photographer that you say you laid out. Did she lay out that money? Yes. Yes. Okay, what else? Her rides back and forth. I'm not interested in her rides back. Well, how was she going to get this? She's in Philadelphia. I, I'm in New Jersey. $300 for a photographer. Mm -hmm. What else? And just money she asked to borrow for the most part throughout like, the wedding. Just a second. So we have... For how much and okay. when? So far, $300 for a photographer. So on January 20th, Your okay. Honor, we have $150. For what? She didn't say what it was for. It was for the wedding, though, because I have it here. Everything wedding is here. Well, did she ask you for this $150 on the phone, in person? She did asked you? for it, like, over the phone, but then I sent the money, too. So anything that I sent to her, I always sent to her through Cash App because she's in Philadelphia, no car. Okay. Then let me ask Ms. Poindexter. Ms. Poindexter, there would be no other reason for Ms. Dobson to send money to you through a cash app during the wedding period other than for the wedding. Would that be accurate? Not in January, Your Honor. We didn't start planning our wedding until 90 days before June. So anything that happened in January had nothing to do with my wedding. Okay. Do you have cash app statements before January? I have nothing before January. She has nothing before. I have everything Only after. January on. Only after. So that would be for the wedding? We didn't start planning our wedding until about March. We got married in June. So what would she be sending you money for? Um, it, it has in... been times, I'm sorry, it has been times when I'll ask her for, you know, let me get $50 or, you know, it, it has what? been times. If I didn't have it or I might need a car fare or something, and she would do that. 
she would lend me money and vice versa. No, I'm not talking about vice versa. I don't have a counterclaim. That you said perfectly. I would ask her for $50 or $100 and she would lend me that. Is that the word she used? Let's make sure I heard that right. She says, it has been times when I'll ask her for, you know, let me get $50 or you know there has been times. And you asked her why. She said, if I didn't have it or I need a car fare or something, and she would do that. She would lend me money and vice versa. Thank you. Lend me money. So, okay, now we're going to get to Miss Dobson. Yes. How much money did you send her via cash up? Because she's already just acknowledged that they, those were loans. So, 150, 100. Let me have the dates. Oh, okay. Okay, All let's right. go back. 150 on what date? January 20th. Okay, 100 on what date? February 11th. Next. March 8th, $50. Okay. April 4th, $100. May 11th, $20. May 17th, $25. May 22nd, $205. Uh, 15 on May 25th. May 28th, $45. June 3rd, $15. And I had a February 28th in here for $50. That was the first one. I'm sorry. Yeah, I had February 11th only. So you have another... Right, a February 28th for $50. Can I see all of those? Yes, ma'am. Here you go. <sighs> Okay, Sarah Rose, to fix that up for me? Okay, and you, based upon the read back and based upon what I thought I heard, anytime she sent you money, it was because you ran out of money, you were in a bind, and she loaned you the money. Yeah. That's what was here. Okay. You have $775. $775. Has she paid you back any of that money? No, Your Honor. Okay, now, the photographer, I want you to tell me how it came about that you paid the photographer. Because Ms. Jones slash Poindexter was waiting on unemployment to hit. And I'm not saying she wasn't trying to get the money up, because she was. But when the time came, this photographer guy needed to get paid, she didn't have the money. You want to tell me about the photographer? Yes, the photographer, I believe it, I was short like 300 semi dollars. And Clarissa did put the rest of the money. Why didn't you pay her the 775? I don't believe I owe. Clarissa. Well, you just told her that she loaned you the money when you were short, and she wired it to you or did whatever they do in a cash app. I don't understand yes. all of that. You said it was a loan. Is there any reason why you didn't pay her back? No. Okay. So, so far I have 775 and 300 okay. Next. Okay, so now we have the trip. They are the godparents of my twins. Yeah, Anna, we were inseparable. So. Okay. They're the godparents of your twins, your yep. twins. Came time for their birthday. She said... Month and year. April of last year, 2021. Okay, April of 2021. Right. So in the process of planning the twins' birthday, Miss Jones Poindexter said, oh, I would like to go. I'm just waiting on the unemployment, pandemic money, all at the hit. When it came time to go, they didn't have the money. You're talking about the defendant and your brother. Yeah. They both went. Right. So Just a second. They yes. both went. They both went. That's correct. And what kind of work does your brother do? He was a chef at the time. So he was working? Yes. And she wasn't working? Yes. Can I say something? You can say whatever you want to say. You know where I'm going, don't you? I know where you're going. Okay. So, like I said, we were inseparable, right? I don't care. Certain I don't care things, about the social aspect of okay, this. Okay, but certain things she just didn't want to let him know she was doing, because at the end of the day, she thought she was going to get this Ms. money. Miss Dobson, mm -hmm. I don't care whether you say she didn't know what she was doing. Mm -hmm. You were already in a place where on January 20th, she uh -huh. didn't have $150, so you sent it to her. On February 11th, she didn't have $100, you sent it to her. On March 8th, she didn't have $50, you had to send it to her. So I, was I don't see stupid written over here. No. If somebody doesn't have 50 bucks and you think I believe that you relied on her statement that I'm going to pay you for this trip that your brother is going on too because his godchildren are celebrating a birthday, I don't mm -hmm. believe it. So yes. let's Let me... just forget a trip. 775 is what she says she owes you because she says it was a loan. $300 for the photographer. You have the pictures? Yes, ma'am. And I don't hear anything from you suggesting to me that this $300 was a gift. I honestly did believe that she was doing it for our wedding. Okay, good. 1075, judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you very much. So when you're on the word of That's it. It's just a sad situation all the way around. That's probably how she feel right now. I love my sister-in-law. She love me and I love her, so what? Honestly, I just want to be able to see my dad. I'm sure we'll be all right.
It's always unfortunate and sad when nice occasion turns sour by one thing. Yeah. And I thought the brother slash husband was <laughs> the very, smartest very, one. <laughs> the smartest one. I'm staying out of this yeah. between my sister and my wife. Yep. The safest place he could be was right where, where he, he sat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just unfortunate. I mean, families squabble all the time, but just to bring it into a legal system, system. there are ramifications for that, that sometimes your anger or emotions can get the better of yeah, you. But to take it to a filing stage and to use the court system, that's just a next level that I feel like most family members don't, don't need do. yeah. or shouldn't do. Yeah, you're right. Tiffany Nelson is suing her sister, Brandy Maida, for property damage, harassment, and lost work. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone, please. Hello, Kevin. Case number 2006, Nelson versus Mata. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Nelson, this is your sister. Yes. How old are you? I am 42. 43, almost 44. Oh, so are you the only two sisters? We have some half sisters, but yes. But you're the only two full biological sisters. Now, there came a time, Miss Mata, that you moved into your sister's home. Yes. Is this a home that you own? Yes, we built it. In what year did you move into her home? That would have been 2018. Who else lives in the house from your family? My disabled mother, my husband, and my child. So your mother lives there? Yes, I take care of my mom. Tell me why you moved into your sister's basement, Miss Mater. In 2015, my oldest son was in a tornado and suffered a severe brain injury. So when my sister Tiffany and her husband were looking for new houses, they offered to build an apartment in their basement so that we could live with them and get out of our mobile home. So when they built this house, it was built with the intention of us living in the basement. Is that correct? Yes, but for a year, because I do take care of my disabled mother, and the intention was for her to be in the basement eventually so that she doesn't have to use stairs. Was the original agreement with your sister that it would not be a permanent move, but one that would last for about a year? It was agreed that it was not a permanent. There was not a date set, though. Okay, but it was agreed it was not a permanent, and you Correct. did not have a written lease. Yes, we did. We do have a lease. You did. I'd like to see it. We had a month-to-month -month lease that I what? have as well. This is the current lease that subsides the other lease. Okay, initially a month to month lease, and what month and year did you have her sign? I have it right here. It's dated July 14th, 2018. So this is a six month lease that ended January 31st. Correct. The rent was $800 a month? Yes. So this last lease was for your sister, her husband, and two children? Correct. I only ask that question because if my reading of your complaint was correct, you say that she moved her husband in without your consent. So when we first agreed to let her move in in 2018, she was divorcing. And the agreement was that her and her two sons could move into the home. He had nowhere to go and she wanted him to move in. So because- In I what year was that? That was still 2018. So that was still 2018. Yeah, so we let, right, so we you, let him live there. So, and since then you'd signed different leases with her, with him on the property. Correct. Okay, so then you acquiesced to it. When you were in the apartment, did you have pets? I did, uh-huh. How many pets did you have? Four dogs. But then, subsequently, some had passed away, so at the end, we only had two dogs. Okay, well, at the signing of this lease, you had six pets, consisting mm -hmm. of cats, dogs, and no other pets being allowed. Correct. And you agreed, regardless of ownership of the pets, agreed to restore the property to its original condition at your expense when Correct. you leave. Okay, good, because that's also part of what this is about, actually most of what this is about. Your Honor, they had three pets upon move out. They had just gotten a puppy, so they did have three pets and two cats upon move out. Doesn't matter. Anybody who has six pets after three years, the carpet needs to be replaced. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, your sister began to move out when? In what month? She moved out on the 1st of February, 2022. Pursuant to your agreement? Correct. And it is your claim that she left the premises in condition that required you to spend close to $10,000 to put it back into shape? 6500 Okay. For the basement damages. I'd like to see photographs of what it looked like because we know it was brand new when you moved in because the house was just Those built. Are all... So we know that it's new. I also have photographs that I took the day we moved out. Okay. I'm going to give you these and then I'm going to look at yours. Okay. Okay, so there's no question you have to replace the carpeting. Right. You understand that. Did yes. you replace the carpeting? No, I had not had any contact Shh. from her. Do you have the bill for the carpeting? I replaced one room already, and I have that, and then I have 
the estimate to replace the other carpet. Okay, I'll take a look at that. And that's the main thing that I see in the apartment that has to be done from these photographs. Okay. Do you leave a lot of food in the refrigerator and all kinds of stuff in the refrigerator? No. So what happened was the refrigerator... Just the answer is either yes or no. Did you leave a whole lot of stuff in the refrigerator? No. Anything in the freezer? No, there was no fridge or freezer. And cabinets. Did you leave anything in the... I'm just looking because there's a picture here of a whole bunch of food. Right. I hadn't finished moving out. My question... But yes, there was My there. question is, you were supposed to be out by February 1st. On February 1st, was there food in the house? Yes. Okay. And it should have been moved. Whether you moved out yet or not, you were supposed to be out by February 1st. Okay. I'd like to see those. So you replaced the carpet in what room? One of the bedrooms, so my mom could move down there so she could not use stairs. Okay. Sarah, add these two figures and have them for me, please. And I don't know what this is a photograph of. So the bags that were left in the home, there was ice cream that was left in those bags, and it had leaked on my flooring, and we moved it outside. And that is the rotted food from the bags. Okay, do you know how that happened? I don't. I have not seen that. Okay. May I see photographs, please, that you took on the day you moved out? Yes. I have that total, Judge. Hmm? $4,129. $4,121? $29. 29 cents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is this after the carpet was taken out? Yes. Kevin, can I please see the photographs that she took? Okay. Actually, they're pretty much the same. Not terrible. A lot of it is ordinary wear and tear, except for the carpet. So that's $4,129. The only other thing that I'm questioning is that I saw these rocks. And I want somebody to explain these rocks to me. So because of the water level, if you go out the downstairs patio, there's rocks there to prevent the yard from sliding. Getting wet. So some of the rocks were moved. They're supposed to all go in a line. And they go down and over. So we have to pay a landscaper to come out and basically redo that. Well, how did that happen? Do you know? They're pretty heavy rocks, so... I don't know. Do you know? know? Did you move the rocks? No, you would need, like, a skid loader to move those rocks. There's no physical way to move those... Where do you live? ...with one person. I live in far west Utah, farm country. Looks like there's water comes down through here. Yes, we live across the street from a pond as well. Well, you don't know how that happens. Now, you have, in addition to your claim, which is for damage, you feel it's necessary to go into these allegations of harassment by your sister? I honestly just want to be done with her and not get threatening text messages and stuff on social media. No chance of a reconciliation. You not lived on together my for a while. I've blocked her from For a family. long time. Yeah. Miss Mato, your sister was there at a time when you needed her. Yes. You think that there's any potential for the two of you to sort of restore some kind of working relationship? Are you the only two? No. This no. is the funeral oh. of our relationship. All right. Not my job. That's a job for another the professional. Okay, you have a counterclaim. Yes. And you counterclaim, just as she's not going into the harassment, I'm not going into anything that involves the harassment. It is your claim that you left certain furniture behind. Well, why wasn't your furniture out on the 1st? Your lease expired at the end of the month in January. It did. And I did let them know that I was not done. Well, that's not a, a reason. That's not a reason to break your contract. Only two people can break a contract, Miss Mater. The two people are the same two people that signed it. You signed a contract that said you would be out on a certain date. You weren't out on a certain date. The fact that you notified her that you're changing the terms of the contract unless she agreed to it, then you should have had your stuff out by the 31st. Why didn't you? Because she had made it very difficult during my moving process. There was a lot of, like I said, harassment and stuff that happened during that moving process. She called the police on the people that were helping me. She made it very difficult to get it done. There was no way that I could get it done well, on that day. Let's get back to call the police. And later to Nelson, claims her sister, Brandy Maida, owes for property damage after living in her basement. Brandy is countersuing for the return of her belongings. Who did you have moving you? I had my best friend, Brittany, was helping me. 
Does Brittany and your sister have any negative history? They do. Okay. Well, if they have any negative history, why would you have her come into the house? Because she doesn't have any access to Tiffany at that point. There was no reason for them to talk. They wouldn't be even associating. You know, if I knew that there were issues between my landlord and a particular person, especially if my landlord was my sister who let me move into her house, just from a question of using my brain, I wouldn't bring somebody that had been on the outs with them. If they didn't like them, that's one thing. You know, I'm really not crazy about your friend, Brittany. That's one thing. But if you knew that there was an active, aggressive feeling against one or the other, you should have had somebody else move. So why didn't you get your stuff out? Well, so I didn't think that it was as serious as that. They are related. If they're related and don't like each other, or the plaintiff doesn't like her, mm -hmm. then... That's even worse. Go ahead. Yeah, so she was my only help. I didn't have anybody to help me at that time. So. Then start doing it sooner. Go ahead. Yeah, that was the Ms. only Mater, reason. Miss Mato, where was your husband? He was working. We were working during this whole time. Well, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I moved and worked. I used to move every time I needed a paint job. I would pack up and move, and I constantly worked. I've worked for 58 years. So that's not a reason to pack in the evening. You go down after work, you get newspaper from the grocery store, and you get old cartons, and you wrap up the dishes and the cartons, and you manage to get out when you're supposed to get out. And she's not the only one who can help you. Maybe your husband has friends. If he doesn't have friends, I don't know why not. And in any I event, that was not a smart thing for you to bring your witness. Furniture. What furniture did you leave? I when left you uh, patio set. On the patio. It was all oh, outside hold furniture. Hold on. Patio set. Mm -hmm. You're on uh, sh just a second. A lawnmower. Okay. Uh, outside bench that had storage and stuff. Yeah. Uh, fire pit and lawn chairs. Okay. And when did you buy the lawn chairs? It would have been 2018. Okay. And how much did you pay for each one? They were uh, 245 for the chaise lounges and 159 for the pool dining chairs. Okay. Are those chairs at your home? Yes. May I see them? Yes. There's four lawn chairs. There was never the long Okay, chair. let me see what's in the home. I also had a cooler. Just a second. Don't bother me about a cooler. Are the lawn chairs still there? Yes. Great, you can go get them. Okay. With a marshal, not with her. What about the fire pit? Still there. You can pick up the fire pit. What about the lawn mower? Still there. Patio set? Still there. They have painted that purple. Painted back. Where are you living now? I have a house. Who are you living there with? With my husband and my sister-in-law. She's living with you? Mm -hmm. She's paying, uh -huh, it's not an answer, yes. Yes. She's paying you rent? No. Why not? My husband's mother, their mother passed away and she needed to be closer to family, so she's just living with us as family. Okay, you're going to get all the property back that you say you left there. And you can do that within five days on notice to the plaintiff with a marshal. Just give him a copy of the order that we'll give you inside. Okay. With regard to the renovation of the house, she has to put the house in reasonable condition. Most of these other pictures demonstrate some wear and tear that you would have to do. Painting and plastering after three and a half years, but the carpeting had to be replaced, $4,129. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you very much. We're finished. This court is adjourned. I'm happy with her decision. I just wanted to fix my basement and move on with my life. I mean, it is what it is. There's nothing to do. You know, I think we were both at fault. Go back home, fix my house, and honestly, I have nothing to do with her again. If she had come and talked to me like a normal person, we could have figured this out without this. No, I'm completely done. I would like to not be inappropriate, but uh, she's just not a good person. I think that the two sisters had the best of intentions. Didn't you get yeah, that feeling? I did, from moving in and knowing you have a designated place at a time of need, that she was gonna design the basement for you to live in, although not permanently. I thought it was gonna go in a good direction. direction. And I'm sure that the plaintiff's mother, who lives with her, mm -hmm. is sad that she doesn't get to see her other daughter probably as frequently as she would like because they live together yeah. in the same home, well, evidently, for a very long time. Yeah. Very bad. There's always collateral damage when people don't get along. True. Case number 2039, Mormon versus Strauss. All party, please step forward. Garrett Mormon is suing his former friend, Sherry Strauss, for car repairs and harassment. Mr. Mormon, the defendant was a friend of yours. Yes, ma'am. A casual friend, a romantic friend? Oh, maybe both, you know. 
a casual romantic how, friend. How long do you know her? 14 years at least, probably closer to 15, yeah. Were you ever together as a couple? No, ma'am. And it is your claim that because she was in financial trouble, you extended a loan to her to fix her car. Yes, ma'am. That's what this case is about. You also say she harassed you, but most of this case is about the loans to fix her car. Ms. Strauss says that you did, in fact, work on her car, but you caused more damage to it than it originally had. And she is counterclaiming for car repairs that she has to make because of work that you did on the car. Who is this person? My fiance. Uh, okay, he's not a mechanic. No. And who is the woman? She is um, the property manager of the motel that I'm living in. So you don't have a mechanic to testify today to anything? No, I do okay. have. The answer is no. No, but I do have an estimate. I don't care about an estimate. Okay, so I would like you to tell me, Ms. Strauss, when did you start to have trouble with your car? March 2nd of 2022. And where were you living at the time? I had just moved into the motel. Had you been spending any time with Mr. Mormon? Previous to that, no. Previous to March of 2022? That's correct. Okay. After March of 2022, did you spend any time with Mr. Mormon? I did, yes. Did you stay at his home? I went there occasionally, yes. No, but I'm asking, did you stay over at his home? Yes. Okay. And when you started to have trouble with the car in March, when you hadn't been staying mm -hmm. at Mr. Mormon's house, did you call him and let him know you were having trouble with your car? I did as a friend, yes. And what did you say to him and what did he say to you? I just told him I dropped my son off at um, his Taekwondo and we were trying to leave and my car was not working. And what I did he say to you? That he will come and, and help me. And help you? Yeah. That was on March 2nd? That was on March 2nd, yes. And did he come to the motel where you were staying? No, he did not. Well, how did he come and help you with the car? Because my car was at my son's taekwondo, so he went there. He came to where you were? Mm hmm And did he take your car someplace? Um, not on that day, no. What did he do on that day? On that day, he took me and my son home. So that was March 2nd? Mm hmm Keep going, March 2nd, March okay. 3rd. And then on March 3rd, we ended up having my car taken over to O'Reilly's. Well, we got a battery. How much was it? It was $167. Who paid for it? I did. So then you were driving it again? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, it's not, yes. Yes, correct. Okay, and when was the next time there was difficulty with the car? Then the next time was March 7th. It died again. So on March 7th, the car died again? And what did you do? Then on March 7th, um, I called him and told him that something's wrong with my car again. Now it's not starting again. Okay, and tell me why you called him. Because as a good friend, like I said, we've been friends for 15 years. As it is, I don't ask anybody for help. I usually try to do everything on my own. But, okay, so you, you know, called him and said the me. car died again? Yep, but he had made it known that he was knowledgeable about cars, so I figured that maybe he would know what was going on. You know who else is knowledgeable? Mechanics. Mm -hmm. Says his former friend, Sherry Strauss, owes for car repairs. Sherry is countersuing, claiming Derek damaged her car, trying to fix it. Okay, so on the 7th, you called him again and said, I'm having trouble. What did he do? Then on the 7th, um, I had to go to work, so I had another friend take me to work. He came and picked me up from work, and we took my car back over to O'Reilly's, took the battery out, had them test it. The battery had been drained. Figured it was the alternator, got the alternator. He put the alternator in. Who paid for all of these repairs? That's what it's about. That's I what paid case for them. So what is he suing for? Because later on, my brakes and rotors went out and I got a flat tire. So at that time, yes, I did call him and let him know. On what date was that? That was on April 16th of 2022. Okay. Well, right now it's gone on the fritz on the 2nd, the 7th, and April 16th. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of aggravation. So on April 16th fiasco with the car and the repairs, how much was that? 234. Who paid for that? He said that he would pay for it. He originally told me that his mechanic would allow me to make payments. And when we went to go pick it up on April 22nd, found out that that was not the case. Okay, so he wasn't going to allow you to make payments, no. which mechanics usually don't. So no. how much was the bill? So the bill was $567.91. And he paid for that because they wouldn't let you make payments? He paid for that because he knew I was- No, no, not he knew. You were originally going to pay for that and make payments. Yeah, to, I was gonna, shh, I just to make second. payments. You were originally going to pay for it and make payments. Mm -hmm. You found out 
that you couldn't make payments. So he said, fine, I will make the full payment to the mechanic. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was always your intention to pay for the repairs of the car, only you yeah. wanted to pay for it in a slower fashion. Right, I was gonna make the payments to the mechanic, yes. Right, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is, did you pay him back any of the 567? I gave him 300 to help him with rent, but Just a I, second. Tell me when you gave him $300 for rent. Um, I gave him the 300 on April 29th. That was after you picked up the car. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, it's not an answer. Yes, ma'am. Did she give you $300 for rent? No, Your Honor, I don't need anybody to help me Did pay you, my rent. Do you have any proof that you gave him $300 for rent, a withdrawal from a bank or no, anything? No, no, I don't, Your Honor. Okay, so so far you owe her $567. Is that what you paid for her in April? No, Your Honor, I paid $674.76. May I see it, please? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, April 18th, 674. Would you show this to Ms. Strauss? Okay, Mr. Mormon? Yeah, sure. Huh? There subsequently came a time, which I think probably was a more social issue than anything else, when the defendant advised- I have a different one that shows May the receipt right there. May I see it? The 567.91. Well, I actually am not understanding this. He paid for this with his visa card. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's correct. Could you explain this to me? This is your visa card. This is the same invoice. One of them is for 567.91. And the one that you gave me, the same invoice number is 674.76. Sarah, would you do me a favor, please? Sure. Would you add up? From both or just the top one? Well, let's start with just the top one for which there is a visa receipt. So I gather that all this became problematic when you started to see a serious boyfriend. Is that right? That's correct. Now, after March, you said you stayed occasionally at Mr. Mormon's. When you stayed at Mr. Mormon's, was that more of a social? I mean, was it a more intimate relationship than just social friends? This was after March, um, after you were in the motel. We were kind of like friends with, you know, benefits in a way, so okay. yeah. All right, and then you found someone new, mm -hmm. and according to him, you advised him that you had somebody new, mm -hmm. and now he wants the money for the car, which you were going to pay anyway. Originally, you were going to pay I it. I figured it was a friend helping you, a friend. I didn't no, think of it, it was. as a loan. No, 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 it wasn't. Even you say, Miss Strauss, it was your intention to pay this bill for your car as you would pay mm -hmm. the other bills for your car. However, when you got there, you found you couldn't make time payments. So he said, well, you need a car. I'll lay it out up front. But it was always your intention to pay for your own car. Do we have a... That is the correct number. Which... And then at the bottom, that totals. And then the additional to bring you to 567 is the tax. Okay. Now, so the next part of your case is about harassment. By whom and for what? Uh, your Honor... After uh, Mr. Martinez got into the picture. That's this gentleman. Yes, ma'am. Uh, he was a man of his word, and he was going to pay me not to talk to Sherry any longer, which I didn't. Okay, so you had a discussion with him that all of her bills he was going to take care of? Many discussions, yes, Your Honor. Okay, and? <laughs> I never got a dime. Okay, well, what is the harassment? Text messages, uh, my witness here, Ms. Montoya. No, just a second. Okay. Text messages what? Just saying, hey, leave her alone, which okay, is fine. Okay, that's all right. That's not a Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, fine. But it was, hey, I'm going to pay you. I'm a man of my okay, word. Okay, well, that, you're Where's not suing him, so who cares about that? Yeah. She owes you 567. That's what you put on your visa. Now, let's get to your money owed for car repairs and harassment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you don't have a mechanic here, so what your claim is is that mm -hmm. whatever he did to the car, he didn't do well, so you had to take the car, or you're going to have to take the car to another mechanic. I don't care. You would plan to fix this car yourself. The problem was with payments. If you had to make additional repairs to the car, that's not his problem. Okay, now you want to tell me what the additional harassment is? Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I have my two witnesses here. He spent a lot of time calling me names. He's called my fiance names. He showed up at my motel threatening and stuff like that. So What did he want? He wanted his money. Okay. But at one point. Now, now he's got his, now he's got it. 
I didn't, I don't need to speak to you. No, but when now I- Now he's got his money. When I had talked to him before, when he thought that David and I was not together anymore, he said, oh, it's not about the money. He goes, I just want you. He's got several messages from me, how he loves me, he wants to be with me and all this and that. Yeah, but and you don't love him and you don't want to be with him, so now you have to pay him for your car repairs, 567. Yeah. Judgment for the plaintiff. Well, We're finished, thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. This court is adjourned. Hey, justice was served, and that's all that matters. It was about because he didn't have me. I went with somebody else, and I wasn't with him. She was a friend, and I tried to help her out. We've been friends for a long time, so I told him we would be, you know, that I wanted to be his friend. I ain't going to help, I can tell you that. I want to continue the friendship, and he didn't want that. I know, never again on her, no. Time to find another mechanic. <laughs> so I really didn't have trouble. So much trouble with that case because the defendant had really planned on paying for her car repairs. Do I think that the guy said to her, you can make payments, and when she got there, mm -hmm. he said, no, who knows? It's not worth it. Yeah. He felt used. I, which I think is valid. Which, you know, give somebody money, and then you've had sort of a friends with benefits relationship, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you've got somebody new, mm -hmm. and you're driving around in a car that yep. you paid to repair. Anyway, it was simple and easy. It was. They're not all that easy. Right. Is suing her former neighbor, Sahara Carrillo, for vet bills after a dog attack. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2042, Highland versus Carrillo. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell me your dog's name. Faith. How old is Faith? 11. How long have you had her, Miss Highland? Since she was five weeks old. When did you live next door to the defendant? Yeah, it was across the way, but... Um, it's across? Yeah, my side of the door faced her side of the door, and there was a grassy knoll in between. Do you have a photograph of the area? No, I don't. Do you? I'd like to see it. That's mine, and this is where hers would be. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is whose trailer? Hers. This career. Is there a street in between this area? That's where hers would be. Right where? There, in that area where the rocky thing, right after the grass. Kevin, give this to the defendant. Maybe this one's better. Where the plaintiff's trailer would be. Okay. And where hers was. This is where hers is, would have been right here. Just put plaintiff and show me where yours was. Mine is right here. Put it down. <laughs> Let me see if that makes it clear to me, Kevin. Thank you. Yours is here, mm -hmm. plaintiff's is here, and this large grass area is a common area? Yeah. It's a common area, because you're all the way down here. This right. is a relatively large space. It's only like... I, I wasn't okay. talking to you. Sorry. Okay. And the incident that involved your pet, Miss Highland, happened on October 8th, 2021. Yeah, it was actually October 9th after going back through the paperwork. You are no longer in this trailer park. No, it's an RV park, but yeah. An RV park. How long were you there? Four or five months. It was like mid to end of May, and this happened in October, and within three weeks, I you left. got a place. And that's your dog? That's yeah. the dog that was injured that day? Yes. And what kind of a dog do you have? A Visla uh, mix boxer. A Visla. Visla. Uh -huh. So tell me what happened, Miss Highland, on October 9th. I had gotten up and I was taking my girls out to go potty. How many of those do you have? Two. I have a puppy that's almost two years old and then Faith. So I was taking my girls out to go potty and I'd been looking to make sure that mm -hmm. the dog was inside and I didn't see the dog, oh. and it was on its chain under her trailer, apparently, because when we came outside. No. Was your dog on a chain? On a leash, yeah. Well, a, a, what kind of leash? This, that's, well, that's not right. Yes, that's, that's not true. Well, that's a leash. Right. That's a leash. It was she on, says the dog was on a chain. No. Do you yes, have? Yes, it was. I don't have a shh, chain. Shh. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a chain. Never had a chain. Uh, it's been a leash. Were you outside on October 9th at the time of this incident? Were yes. you outside when it started? No. Yes. <laughs> I was outside on top of my stairs. No, you weren't. Okay. You're not allowed to answer her. I'll come back to you. Okay. Okay, so you're taking your dogs out to potty. 
Were they on a leash or off leash? They were on a leash. But she didn't have they them? They go out. Don't them. speak. Okay. I always have them on a leash whenever they go out. Were they on a leash on October 9th? Yes. Okay, so you were taking them out, although you did say, Miss Highland, that you let them out in your front yard, is what you said, I believe, in your complaint. Let me see. You didn't say I took. You said I let my dogs out in the front yard to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Well, when I say let them out, let me clarify. Okay, I'm always with my dogs. I know that you say you were always with them. Yeah. That's not my question. My question to you was a simple one: Were they on leash or off yeah. leash? Yeah. Yes. They, what? They were on their leashes. Mm -hmm. Be careful. You took them out on leashes in the front grass. Mm -hmm. And what happened? When we got down to the bottom of the steps, her dog came out from underneath the trailer and grabbed Faith. Well, she was on a leash. Yeah, but she grabbed her. The puppy started to go one way, and I had Faith and dropped her leash. And the puppy was going, like, she got out of my hand and was taken off. And her dog was under the trailer, didn't know it, because I had been watching to make sure she had been inside, but didn't see her or the dog out. And she came out of the trailer after the dog grabbed Faith. In what location did her dog grab Faith? Right by my trailer, right by my steps, where I had my steps. The chain was long enough for the mm -mm. dog to go past the tree that was right mm -hmm. there in between the two properties. And she came out and Your started dogs came right. No, 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 just, just, just You didn't have a hold of the you're, leash. You're not... That's sorry. because you're not, the dog is free. Sorry, sorry. Hmm. You want to continue with this case or you want to go? No, I want to continue. Then let's understand. We don't talk to each other. Okay. So your version of the events is that her dog was chained under her trailer. You came out with your dogs on leash. The mm -hmm. puppy ran away. You dropped her leash. Her dog got your dog and took your dog back to her trailer. Yeah. At what point did she come out of the trailer? After the second time, her dog had picked up Faith, and Faith was screaming, and I was screaming. Okay. Miss Carrillo, have you ever had an incident with your dog before? No. I with haven't. another dog? No, I haven't. That's a lie, because you... Shh. I want you to think carefully. Have you ever had another incident with your dog and another dog? No. How long have you had your dog? Since she was a puppy, nine years, since... Uh, 2013. And this is the first time she aggressively bit another animal? Yes. Okay. You have information to the contrary, Miss Highland? Yeah. Okay. Because I when I... I'd like you to tell okay. me. Okay. When I first moved in, she even told me about how her dog had killed a couple <sighs> other dogs. Okay. Tell me about that. She just told me to make sure I was careful with my dogs because her dog has a history of attacking and aggression towards no, other dogs. No, well, those are conclusions. You first said yeah, that her dog told, killed two dogs. She and then... did. She told me that her dog was aggressive and that it has a history of killing other dogs and that it had already killed other dogs, and that's why she got kicked out of her last RV park. I've never lived at another RV park. That's, That's my first RV park ever living at. Where did you live before? At my mom's on Ming Avenue. Did you ever indicate to Miss Highland that she should keep her dogs close to her? We've never spoken prior to the incident. We never, I mean, just a maybe a hi. She just had moved in. I never spoke to her. You want to tell me your version of what happened on the 9th of October? Yes. I was outside on top of my stairs. I was sweeping. My dog was at the bottom of the stairs. I have her tied up to the stairs. There's a ring where I clip her leash to, so she can't go far. It's just this distance while I was sweeping. Would you hand that to me, please? And I can hear her dogs barking while they were inside. Would you open it up for me? Okay. What you're telling me is that this is what you tied on to under the stairs. Where did you tie it? This part right here. And then Where? I have, I have, Where? It, I have to show you how I, I have it, put it on. Can you give it yeah, back? Let her show me. Okay. I'll clip it onto her harness. And then this would clip what onto harness? the bottom. What? My dog's harness. Are you telling me that your dog was on a two foot lead? Yes, I have her right there when I'm right there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, yeah. A neighbor can vouch to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Highland claims her former neighbor, Sahara Carrillo, owes for vet bills after Sahara's dog attacks her chihuahua. Tell me your name. My name is Garrett Newhouse. Mr. Newhouse, how long have you been the defendant's neighbor? Two, three years. Did you see the dog on that gizmo? Yes. How far do you live from the defendant? I'm directly behind Sarah. Hmm? I'm just right behind her. Behind hers. So you face the back or the front of her trailer? The front of my trailer faces the back of her trailer. The door is the same direction towards the yard. So that you don't see her front door? Her trailer is angled so that I can see her front door. Okay. You want to tell me your version of what happened on the 9th? You can sit down. I was outside on top of my stairs. My dog was at the bottom. On the on bottom, this thing. On okay. the bottom, there's a, I have a hook that I clip her uh, leash to. And she was uh, sun sunbathing right there. I moved her other places, but while I was there sweeping on top, she was right there. So then I hear her dogs inside that were barking. And then all of a sudden I hear the door open and the dogs just come rushing, both of her dogs. They, were, they had leashes on, but she wasn't holding the leashes. And then my dog grabbed her dog and I yelled at my dog and whacked her in her head and she dropped the dog. And then that's when she, she was that on her way. How did that happen? What do you mean? Your dog is on a two foot lead. You heard her dogs coming out. You were on top of the stairs. Yes. You saw her dogs, according to you, running. And your dog is on this much. This, this much. much. Yes. No, actually not that much because you made a loop. Yeah, that's the way the, I, I, do, I okay. do it. Well, not a moment ago, way. you, made, it, you yeah. made a loop. So it was on about this much. And this on much. about this much lead, your dog picked up her dog in the mouth how many times? Just that one time. And it's this long. You can see where the, the area is all dirt, where she stays on and, and runs around it or misses in the dirt. The grass is still right there where it's nice and green. And the area that she sits in is right there, right in front of my stairs. And so your dog grabbed her dog in the mouth while close to your trailer. At my trailer, yeah. At your trailer. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you hit it on the rear end and she spit out the dog. Yes. And then? And then she ran towards her and she came towards her dog. This little dog ran towards the plaintiff. The plaintiff ran towards her. And what did you do? She went to get her dog mm -hmm. and I what grabbed did you my do? dog. How did you grab your dog? I took her off her leash and put her inside. And then I went to see if her dog, you know, is your dog okay? You know, um, you should have had a hold of her leash. Now, know? what did you say to her when you came out? Is your dog okay? Okay. Is your dog okay? And what did she say to you? I can't remember. She was just, uh, you know, your dog got my dog. I'm like, you, how come you didn't have the leash? They were on leashes, but she wasn't holding them. And she said because of her legs that she couldn't. And I told her, then you shouldn't have dogs if you can't take care of them. Just a second. Is that what you said to her? You shouldn't have dogs if you can't take care if of them? If you can't take, I mean, they can't be loose. There's a leash law and she didn't have the leash. She had leashes on them, but she didn't have a hold of them. I'm just asking you. Yeah. That's what you want me to believe you said to her. That's what I said to her, yeah. You, you know, you shouldn't have dogs if you can't take care of That's them. That's what I said, yes. Okay. And did you see her dog injured in any way? No. Can I see the mm -hmm. records from the vet, please? Yeah. And here's even photos. And was there a report made to either the there RV? Was, uh, oh, shh, they... I didn't finish oh, okay. my question. <laughs> was there a report made to the RV park yes. or to the police department? Yes. May I see that too as well? I don't have the RV park or the police report. They okay. could not. Okay, but not they, they were could not. Me all over. The but. answer is I don't have them. Yeah. But that's just photos from the injuries. <laughs> I'd like to see the vet report, please. This is the neurology. This is all the other vet stuff. Don't give me a whole bunch of stuff. I'd like to see the reports and the bills from the vet. Mm. And I am correct, sir. You did not see any of this incident. Is that correct? Only the commotion. No, just a second. And, I, and I'm asking you. I'm no, 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 no. Stand up. Let's be very careful about your answer. Am I correct that you didn't see any of this incident? Only after she had smacked the dog and he dropped the dog and they were that little commotion right there where she picked up the dog and went in the house. 
You saw it from your trailer, from your RV? Sitting outside my trailer. So I want you to tell me exactly what you saw. Now look at me. Her. Who's her? her um, Sarah. Her picking up her dog and going back to her house. Where was she when she picked up her dog? Uh, no, I tell you for, what you're going to do. You're going to show me right here. Like halfway Just between her house and her. I mean, her house. Put a mark where you saw her, where she picked up her dog. Can oh, may I have that, please? Straight somewhere. Like a couple feet away. So she picked up her dog right near Miss Carrillo's RV. Correct, yes. And where was Miss Carrillo? She took the dog and put it up the stairs, put it in the house, and shut the door and came back out to see. And at that time, were you listening to what the two women were saying to each other? Not really. Were they yelling at each other or were they calm? There was yelling. So if they were yelling, could you hear what the yelling was? I didn't know either one of them at that time really that well. We went and I think I went back in the house at that point. There's Whatever. Thank you. You've been most helpful. Okay. You have the report for me from the 9th of October? Yeah. I'd like to see it. Okay, so there was one set of stitches that the dog had. That was her first surgery. Okay. Let me see the second time she was there. This is the stuff for that one. <laughs> And that's what the, why? Well, this was the day afterwards. And when did she right. go back? It was June 30th because she was having grandma seizures and they had to keep her because they had to start her on phenobarbital mm -hmm. because of the well, eye injuries and the head injuries. Well, it doesn't really talk it, about those that's injuries. That's in the pictures. It shows where her head was punctured. I see one wound. And I don't well, see no. a photo. On the picture itself, if you see her head, there's a mark right here on her head by her eye. That was a puncture wound that they had to clean out. Okay. Now, the defendant says both dogs had a leash on, but mm -hmm. that the leashes weren't attached to your hand. Is that correct? I honestly, I don't remember because most of the time when I'm coming down the steps, I have their leash in hand. And sometimes, like, going down the steps, I lose the leash or I drop it and they are at the bottom of the steps waiting for me because they know it takes me a minute to get down the steps. Okay. Says her former neighbor, Sahara Carrillo, is responsible for her chihuahua's vet bills. Sahara claims her dog was tied up and the Nets dog ran onto her property. At any time did Faith run across the lawn. No, she was right by the steps because the tree is right there. It was like in between our spaces isn't in, even as big as this, in between here and your front of the Of bench. the bench. And literally she was grabbed right by my steps. Was any report made by you to any animal control? I'd called 911 and reported it, and they can't find the report, but it was done over the phone, and I waited for them to come out for a week, and I kept did calling you, them. But did I you? I did it over the phone with them. Did you ascertain from the defendant whether her dog was up to date in rabies shots? I didn't ask any questions I was, afterwards. I was just trying to make sure and find out what was going on with her. Did anyone from the RV park come and discuss the incident with you? They just asked me what Just happened. a second. So the answer is yes. Do you have any sort of documentation of that discussion that they had with you? There was no documentation. Do you remember the name of the person that you spoke to? Yes. Are you still at the RV park? Yes. Did you tell the RV park that there was a witness to this event? No. Well, there were two different versions of the event. One says that your dog came and attacked hers, and you say that her chihuahua came mm -hmm. and was aggressive towards your dog. But you have allegedly an independent witness who saw part or most of it who you brought to court today. I assume that the plaintiff communicated to the RV park that your dog was at fault. Correct? Yes. And you say your dog was not at fault. Is there any reason why you didn't tell the RV park that there was a witness? Oh, because I didn't know yet. 
When did you find out that he had seen anything of the event? Maybe like uh, three weeks after. Tell me about that. How did you find out that he had seen any part of it? Because I was talking to him about what was going on, that she was going to take me to court, and then um, he said no, that he had so seen... Now, so now you were talking to your neighbor. Right. Which meant that you must have been at least somewhat friendly towards him. At that time, yes. At the time of the incident on the 9th of October. We didn't know each other that well. But you had lived there for a long time. How long did you live there? Since July 20. And how long has he been living there? How long have you been living there? A long time, 20 years. Long time, 20 years. So my question is, what prompted you three weeks later to have a discussion with because him? Because I started to get to know him by then. I, I worked. I worked at that time, I worked a lot. You know, so I started to uh, conversate with my neighbor. That, that's... Mm -hmm. Okay. How much were your vet bills? At this point, it's over 10000 Have they been paid? Most of them. Okay. I'd like to see the bills, the last bill. And can I say something about yeah. what she said? First of all, she was in there way before I was. She had already been there over a year. And second of all, the thing is, is she couldn't have said anything three weeks after because it wasn't after until my leg recovered from having to have emergency surgery from falling right after the incident happened that I even decided to file court papers. So the court papers weren't even filed until, until when? June. I didn't say they were filed. You said three weeks after. But anyways, oh. so like all this yeah, I see the bills please. back in October. Mm -hmm. And I literally couldn't get to the courthouse to be able to drive to the courthouse. How much do you owe the vet? What I've already paid is over 2000 or right around 2000 in cash that I've paid, but to get her MRI, I need to pay 3000 Just There is no nexus that can be drawn yeah. between the seizures that she's having now, other than the well, other, I'm speaking, other than the vet saying that it's possible that it can be caused by trauma. Yeah. That's, other than that, that's the only thing I saw there. There was right. not a full report that said the trauma that she had six mm -hmm. months before was the basis for these seizures that she's having. Seizures, she she's having 11 years seizures old. Seizures right after the attack. Ms. Highland, you have to understand that you need an expert witness that you don't have to demonstrate that the seizures that your dog is currently having is a direct result of this dog attack. Right. You understand? Faith is 11 years old, and I it's possible. Have the just a second. It's possible that it comes from that. It's possible it comes from something else. I don't deal in possibilities. Right. All I want to know is what vet bills the you paid for October 9th. On October 10th. The actual total was 1526.62 without her medicine being involved. Okay. Well, that's a reasonable vet bill for those two dates. She did have two different surgeries. And the medications that you're talking about were also included right. in that 1526. Right other than for the seizures that you want me to draw a connection with, with well, I'm not. And nothing more is owed to the vet for those two days, October right. 9th and 10th. Okay. Ms. Carrillo, I have to make a determination as to whether or not I believe the story that her two little dogs rushed up to your dog that was being chained to a step on a very, very short lead with you standing right there. And whether or not I believe that you stood there while your dog that was on a very short lead that has never had any problems with aggression before picked up her dog twice because once she had puncture wounds in the stomach and once she had puncture wounds around the head. And I don't believe you. Quite frankly, I don't believe you. Okay. And I think you're responsible for her vet bills. I think you would have indicated. Didn't and she say that she didn't have the leash, that she wasn't sure if she was holding the leash? Her Absolutely. Dog I, don't, my I, dog. Don't answer, I don't you answer know? your questions. If you're, if you're standing on your step sweeping yes. and your dog is now chained and you see Not her chained. dogs running across, then you jump down from the step and you grab your dog. That's what you do. You have a very big dog that you keep on a very short, according to you, chain. Yes. And there's a reason for that. So if because you're standing for that... 
this is not a That's fine. question and answer. You're responsible for our vet bills. I believe her. $1,526. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you. This court is adjourned. Jay behaved like even in the courtroom. She did get bitten by my dog, but, you know. You know, they listen. Like, if I start counting to three with them. It was about her not having them on the leash and having control of her dogs. They go and do what they're told. About her dog getting hurt. I mean, I went to see if it was okay. <laughs> because that's how she is. That if my dog bites another dog, I'm going to have to pay. <laughs> So one thing I found interesting about that defendant's testimony was that when you were in your line of questioning about whether or not her dog had ever been in another fight or with any other dog, any interaction, she said no. I thought I remembered when I was reading her answer, she stated that she had a mutual understanding with the plaintiff that when her larger dog was outside, the plaintiff's dogs would be kept inside. Why would you need to have that sort of mutual understanding unless you knew that your larger dog had a propensity for violence towards well, that, other dogs? That's true. I, you know, I forgot. And now I, that you mentioned it. I remember that I read about this mutual yeah. agreement. I, yeah, I wouldn't think that the, she was afraid that the Chihuahua would attack her dog. Probably not. Pull back for an illegal eviction, security deposits, and an assault. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Hello. Case 2085, Schumann versus Back. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Schumann. Yes, Your Honor. I assume this is your wife? My girlfriend. Girlfriend. And my son, Blake. And your girlfriend is here just for moral support. She wasn't living with you in the house. She wasn't living with me, no, but she was... Sit down. I was a witness. Sit. A part of it. Sit down. A big part she, of it. She was not living at the house? No. Just you and your son? Yes. And you were tenants of Mr. and Mrs. Back for how long? I think it was six years. Starting when? When did I sign the lease? August 2016. Don't help him. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, 8116. And which unit do you rent? Because they also live in the house. Yeah, it's three floors. I have the middle, and the top is just a little loft. Comes with a little loft. And did you move in there with your son? No, in the beginning, no. He, he wasn't with me. Was it just you? It was just me. And when did he move in? Probably two years later. 2018? Yeah. How old is he? He's 15. Now, in 2016, everything going well with your landlord? Yeah. Same landlord? Yes. What about 2017? Everything's good. Everything's going fine. 18? Must have been going fine because you brought your son in to live with you. We did have a few incidences that I had to call the police then. Okay. So in 2018, you had to call the police? Yes. When in 2018? First time Mrs. Back came and um, she had a problem with Blake. She said he walked too hard upstairs. Okay. Now, before Blake came with you, with whom was he living? With his mother. How long was he living with his mother? Since he, you know... Since he was born? Yeah, since birth. <laughs> and did you visit with him before he came to live with you? Yeah, I had him every other weekend and Tuesdays and Thursdays. So something must have happened in 2018 because he's 15 years old, he's in high school. You want to tell me the reason? And I want you to bear in mind, this is my business. Yeah. You want to tell me why your son came to live with you? And if you just want to say to me he and his mother weren't getting along, I will accept that. Uh, no, that's not why. She uh, wanted to move to Florida, and she said I could have Blake. Interesting. Okay, so the first time you started to have trouble was when your son came and Mrs. Back said that he was walking too loud, making too much noise upstairs. Yeah. And how did she communicate that with you? Well, you know, Mr. Back was really the one who had the problem. At night, he because Blake would go from his bedroom to the bathroom, and he walked too loud. That was it. So what did you do? Well, that was that. Year. I want to know why you called the police. Well, why you called the police was because finally, th this was the following year when she. No, just a second. So that was it. In 2018, they told you that your son was walking too heavy. Yeah. In the middle of the night, going from his room to the bathroom. Yeah. Okay, but that didn't require a call to the police. So, I'm waiting. Well. Um, this is she not a well. You call the police. I want me. to tell you something. I've been a tenant for most of my life. I've never called the police on a landlord. So this is not an answer that starts with well. When was the first time you called the police regarding Mr. and Mrs. Back? And for what reason? She illegally entered my apartment. She used her okay. key to come into my house. Okay. Don't speak. I told you not to speak. Okay. I'm sorry. 
when did she use a key to come into your apartment? What time of the day? No, there, month. Day in, oh, month. I don't remember. I mean, I have the police report. Oh, I'd like to see it yeah. for that. Well, tell me. The door was open, Your Honor. Sorry. What part don't you understand? You want me to just grant his application and say goodbye to you? I'm sorry. Sorry. I know I had it. I have it, but I... You have it, but you don't have it. Well, it... Okay. So that was sometime, according to you, in 2018-19, she entered your apartment without your permission using a key. Yes. And as a result of that, what happened? Well, the, the officer not, came... It's not a well. Yep. The officer so came. she came in, and you found out that she'd been in your apartment. How did you... Yeah, I was upstairs. Did... I was in the apartment, and she came in. Oh, she used her key? Yeah. And came in, and you were there? Yes. Tell me about that incident. So she After came in. She confronted Blake, then I went upstairs. Just a second. She confronted Blake, and you went upstairs. Upstairs from where? From downstairs. We were, so we you were, were coming, we were coming home. She came running down the block, saw that we were home, and started telling Blake that he walks too loud. You're walking too loud. You're walking too loud. Just a second. She's in the street. She was coming. She's coming. Us, she's coming. You back. said you were outside. You were outside. First, you tell me, if I'm not mistaken, Whitney, he said he was in the apartment when she came in. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. First, you told me you were in the apartment. That's not accurate. This happened outside. Yeah. Yeah. So it happened outside, and she was yelling at your son that he was walking too loud. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. And now she's outside coming from the beach. She's telling him, you're coming inside, coming... Keep going. Then we went inside. I said, okay. Just a second. I said, okay, I'll tell him to walk a little softer, levitate a little bit. And uh, we went inside and I got onto the phone talking to somebody. I guess she heard me talking and she opened her key and came up the stairs and started yelling. Um, okay. I wasn't yelling at Blake. I wasn't doing this to Blake. I wasn't okay. doing that to Blake. All right, next. 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 I'll tell you what this case is about so that everybody understands what this case is about. You're claiming that they illegally evicted you. That's one thing. You claim that they have your security deposit. And what else do you want? You say that there was a simple assault because when yelling at you, one of them spit on you. It was a lot more than yelling. I don't care what's yelling. Nobody hit you. That's either a yes or a no. No. Mm -mm. Schumann claims his former landlords, Diana and Donald Back, owe for an illegal eviction security deposit and an assault. Diana and Donald are countersuing for apartment damage. Now, illegal eviction, return of security deposit. And you lived there until when? Until uh, June of this year. Now, in June, something happened, and that's where your girlfriend has some information, because it was June... Third. You are... Gina. Yes. Perfect. You and Gina were in bed asleep. Does Gina have her own car? Yes. Do you have a car? Yes. So that's two cars. Yes. Where are you supposed to park? Well, we don't have a driveway, so you can park on the street if you want. Okay, so you weren't parked anywhere near the house? No, across the street. Correct? Yes. So his cars weren't blocking yours? Yes, they were. Where was your car parked? My car was parked out front behind his disabled spot that he has for himself and only him. I was Just a second. Behind There's him. a disabled parking spot on a public street? Yes, but it's only his, for his number only. So no one else can park there or they get ticketed or and towed. Even if you're disabled? Shh. Yeah, even if you're disabled, you're not allowed. Did you get a spot assigned to you, sir, assigned to your car because of a disability? Yes. What's the nature of the disability? I had two cracked vertebrae in my neck. I dislocated my left shoulder. I have herniated and ruptured discs in my lower back and nerve damage down my left leg. So you have a place to park? Yes. Were you or your girlfriend, Gina, in any way blocking Mr. and Mrs. Back's car? No. Okay. Did you see where they were parked? Yeah, she was parked on the street in front of the house. Their car was parked in the street in front of the house? Yes. Okay. Go. June 3rd, where was your car? So my car was parked behind his disabled spot. My husband came in and showed me a ticket that was on my car, and I couldn't understand it because there's no meters or anything. And when I went to look at the ticket, it took me a little time. I checked it. It was for unregistered vehicle. First time in my life I've ever done something like that. I went online right away because I said, I know I did this in April in my mind because I do everything online. Obviously, I never sent it through, and I didn't realize it. Cops in the town have a scanner. 
He scanned my card. They gave me a ticket. I okay. am responsible for that. I understand that. But when I spoke to the cop, he said... Now, don't tell me what the cop well, said. Well, I can get a ticket every 12 hours. So I panicked. I said, okay, I, I'm going to try... Uh, now I understand what's happening. But I needed to Shh, get my car... Just a second. So now I understand what happened. She got a ticket parking on the street. And the ticket for parking on the street was for having an unregistered vehicle. Yes. Your car was not parked in your designated handicapped spot. Instead, you and Gina were parked in the street. Yes. So she came to you to ask you to take your car and put it in your handicapped spot so that she could park in the driveway. No. Well, we what? just asked for, we just needed one of them. Can you see just a look at this picture? Just a second. And then you'll understand what I mean. You asked one of them to move their car? I tried to just get in touch with both of them at this point, just, like, just get their uh, attention. You, you said, Miss Back, no to me very fast. I want you to listen no, to I what I said. No, I asked to go in. There's six, this, there's six parking spots on this lot. So I didn't need him to go in his spot, is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter. I just needed him you need to move? To get through. He could have stayed there the whole night if he wanted to. Okay. And what time was this? My husband walked in about 20 to 9. I started to look it up, thinking that something was wrong. By the time I figured that out, then I knocked on the door. Just a second. No Give answer. me a time that you went to his door to knock at the door. I started knocking on the door about 9 o'clock, a little bit after, maybe 5 of 9 o'clock. And then I proceeded to text, and I proceeded to call. Okay. Now, prior to that, Mr. Schumann, prior to that date, at about 9 o'clock, when was the time immediately prior that you called the police about the behavior or a complaint about Mr. and Mrs. Back? After. Shh. Okay. What don't you understand? When I called the police, it was probably about 9.45. No, prior to that night, when she wanted you to move your car. When was the time immediately preceding that that you called the police about any conduct of Mr. and Mrs. Back? Yeah, I don't remember the date. Give me the month and year. Oh, wow. It was... So far, we have maybe 2018. 2000, maybe 2020. So that was the second time that you've called the police? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. You keep saying that. Okay. 2020. What was that about? What that was about was she was downstairs with her friends. They were smoking so much marijuana that we couldn't breathe on the second and third floor. And Mrs. Zanino called her and said, you guys got to knock it off. You got to stop. We can't breathe up here. Had opened the windows, had to turn on fans, and I had Blake there. May I see the police report? That one I don't have. They wouldn't give it to me. They said because... Just a second. That they said you don't have that police report, but that you called because of smoking marijuana. Yes. Okay. And that was the time immediately preceding the call at 945 in June of 2022. Yes. There were no calls in between. No. Is that correct? One after, but not before. One after. Two days later. Two days after, after the, the altercation. Yeah. After the altercation. Okay. So now, according to you, you and Gina are in bed, sound asleep at nine o'clock. Yeah. Where is your son? He's downstairs on the second floor. That's where his bedroom is. Okay. But downstairs, when you want to get in, do you get in from the second floor or the third? Come in the house. You got to come in from the first floor. And then the walk up a flight of yeah. stairs. So you have yeah. to pass where your son is. Your son is on the second floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. If I'm going up to the loft, the bedroom door is right there. That's, that's, yeah. Okay. What's your son's first name? Blake. Blake, stand up. Move over next to your father. You're 15 years old? Yes. 15-year-olds don't go to sleep at 9 o'clock at night. June 3rd, 2022, where were you? I was uh, in the bathroom. You were in the bathroom? Yes. All night? No, not all night. Well, when were you in the bathroom? Around 9.30. When did you hear banging on the door? Uh, it was around that time. It was around 9.30? Yes. What did you do? Well, I, I didn't know what was going on. No, I, you heard banging at the door? Yes. Did somebody say something? Uh, well... Not uh, well. Look at me. All you have to do is remember this. Don't nervous. speak, Mr. Schumann. He's Don't nervous. speak to him. No, he's nervous. That's Don't that's speak to him. <laughs> he won't have to be nervous if he tells the truth. So, you see, you just have to cool it. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Perfect. Daniel Schumann has accused his former landlords, Diana and Donald Back, of wrongfully evicting him and keeping his security deposit. You came here. You brought him. Just remember that. You I came. I know. You brought him. What did you hear when you heard banging at the door? Uh, I heard 
Don scream Dan. Blair you heard Mr. Back. Yes. Mr. Scream Back. what? Dan and Dan. Yes. And that's your father. Yes. How many times did you hear him scream Dan? Only once. Once. And are you out of the bathroom? Well, I did. Oh, that, that's not an. Uh, oh, sorry, well. Sorry, sorry. Are you out of the bathroom or still in the bathroom? I'm still in the bathroom. Okay, so you're still in the bathroom. Yes. Is the door open or closed? Closed. Closed. So behind a closed door in the bathroom, you heard Dan from the floor below. Yes. Dan. Now, what did you hear after that? Uh. Oh, it's not an answer. Mm. What did you hear after that? Dan, Dan, now you knew somebody was looking for your father. Oh, well, I panicked, sort of. You panicked? Yes. Because somebody was looking for your father and you knew it was the landlord? Yeah. It was... You knew it was the landlord? No, I didn't. I you thought... just told me I that... thought someone was trying to break in. <laughs> Ron, you me just a second. <laughs> Blake, uh... let's get real. Okay, let's stop with the scripted scenario that your father is giving no, you. Because if scripted. don't, no. don't speak. Because at nine o'clock at night, if somebody is banging at the door and calling your father's name, then it doesn't sound like a break in to me. If somebody's banging at my door and somebody is yelling out, Nana, Nana, I know they're not trying to break into my house. It was. Do you understand? At the door. Do you understand? It was the whole house was shaken. Okay. The entire okay, house. Mr. Schumann, Mr. Schumann, I'm not speaking to you. Do you understand? You brought this ridiculous lawsuit. You brought this ridiculous the lawsuit. The truth has to be told. I can't tell Just the a truth. second. Because they're lying. Uh, Mr. Schumann. No, you're lying. You, you're lying. Mr. Schumann, you brought this ridiculous lawsuit, except for one thing. I'm finished with you. Sit down. Your Honor, I wasn't even the one who called the cops at first. Just a second. The neighbor across the street called first because... Mr. Schumann, you have a police report? Yeah. Then I'd like to see where the neighbor across the street called oh, the police. Yeah, that says it in Just there. a second. I'd like to see it. He also called. Shh. Okay. Yeah, when I called, they said someone else has already called. Give this back. Give this back. They don't understand not to talk. All right. I'm about finished with you. You moved out? Yes, I was a great. evicted. Great. It's I a was, great thing that you I moved out. It's out. a great thing that you moved out because... You don't want to be with such bad landlords who yell and scream in the middle of the night, who smoke marijuana around your 15-year-old son who would never think of doing that, right? Right? Yes. Yes, of course. And so it's a good thing that you found someplace else to go. Well, it is a good thing. I'm, it's a very, very good of thing. The stress that's off me now Perfect. Is... Then, it's a, no. then it's what we call a mitzvah that you moved out. Okay? The only thing that I'm entertaining on either side is, on your side, the return of your security deposit. Do you understand? Yes. How much was your security deposit? Seventeen fifty. When you left, did you get any of your security deposit back? No. What date did you leave? Uh, it was the last day of uh, June. So it was June 30th. And you paid June's rent? Yes. So now you're going to have to explain to me, Mr. and Mrs. Back, and I think I'm going to go to Mrs. Back, why you kept their security deposit. Well, Your Honor, he signed a lease when he Just first moved in. Just to tell me why you kept their security because deposit. Because he was asked to give me 60 days notice, written 60 days notice. Forget it. The people who call the police on you all the time, you're going to get down on the ground, kiss the ground, and say, thank God for they're not in my house anymore. Do you understand? Do you understand? Kind of. He's happy. What do you mean, kind of? Well, what do you I wasn't mean, ready for the change at the time. That's why I always ask for 60 days' notice. Oh, you, sound I, you, sound you sound ridiculous. I'm sorry. You sound ridiculous. Okay. Do you understand why she sounds ridiculous? You had very, very oh, bad experience with your tenants. Police were called. I don't know. I've lived in places all my life. Police were never called on me as a tenant. I never called police on a landlord. Out there in the near audience, I want to know how many of you ever called the police about your landlord. Raise your hand. I just want some idea. Raise your hand. Don't tell me the truth. Okay, good. Now, how many ever called the police on a tenant? Look at all this. How many times? Twice. Great. <laughs> landlord or tenant? On a tenant. You called about a tenant? Yes. About a disruptive tenant? Yes. So, with the exception of Kevin, who is a businessman entrepreneur when he's not here taking care of my business here, and he called the police twice because of a tenant. Nobody else has ever called the police, so you should say thank you, 
landlord for getting rid of these tenants who called the police and not give me baloney about a 60-day notice. Now, if that's why you kept their security deposit, which is what you said to me, right. then he gets a security deposit back, 1750 And that's the only reason you gave me. It's 1725 but Just I a second. Finish. 17 25 You did finish. I said, what was the reason? I asked you twice. Well, what was the reason? And the second, what was the reason? I was uh, letting him go from the 17th when he texted my husband to the 17th. The only thing I wanted in return is access. He said, no, see you in court. Just so I turned around and held him to his lease. Very good. Not That's here. Right. Not here. Okay. 1750, he gets a security deposit back. 1750 or 1725? 1750. Take a look. Let's get the number right. The lease. This is he fascinating. Signed, he signed his lease that says 1725. Okay. You have information to the contrary, no, Mr. Schumann. No, she's right. 1725. 1725. Judgment for the plaintiff. Okay. We're done. Counterclaim is dismissed. We're finished. That's it. Court is adjourned. Judge Judy was right about I should be counting my blessings that they're gone. It was over a silly parking spot. I'm yeah, glad we're he's out, but I don't think he deserves his his security. I mean, I couldn't teach him how to levitate. Yeah. I tried, much as I tried, I, yeah, we couldn't get it. I'll never understand why acrimonious relationships between landlords and tenants would wish to continue on for another 30 days, another 60 days, cut your losses and get out of there. And that's what happened. And, and the defendants answer that, well, he was supposed to give me 60 days notice. Why would you want him there for the another 60 days? He's called the police on you, as far as we know, th at least three times. Yes. Whatever. It was just a bad scene. And for some reason, he didn't park at his assigned spot because of his handicap. He parked whatever. I think everyone should just cut their losses. And, and move on and be happy. <laughs> Life is so short. Yes, agreed. Be happy. Previously on Judy Justice. You were looking for a job. And what were you supposed to do? Bartend, close, open, and run the concession stand. I want you to do a step-by-step -step why you contacted the authorities. Chris was still giving out free alcohol to people, pouring it, wasn't even checking people's IDs. So I called the ABC and I said, I think there's suspicion that he's giving minors alcohol. And that was very distressing to you. So distressing that you said to him, do you have any other work? for us. Yes. And did he say, I have an apartment complex that needs painting? Yes. And it was after the painting kerfuffle that you called alcohol beverage. So we shouldn't, Nobody have, we was shouldn't have reported it at all. No, I, we shouldn't no have reported I'm it? trying to get to your motive, sir. And now, the conclusion. Noah Joyner and Harlan Hendrickson have accused their former employer, Christopher Ricks, of vandalizing Noah's car and refusing to pay wages. Christopher claims they slandered his business. Now, you have photographs of the place before you started painting and afterwards? you have any photographs? Absolutely. I'd like to see them. It's just the, the paint on the floor. The just paint. a second. Okay, very well. I, I have eyes. Thank I can you. look at the pictures. So the I just want to take a look if I need any. How they are before we paint them. That's before they're painted, Your Honor. These are your photographs? Yes, ma'am. You painted the floor? No, ma'am. We had to declutter a couple of units that had stuff. One unit. Like that. Shh, shh. Don't speak. You had to, what you call declutter, and you had to sweep it up before you started painting. It was worse. Than okay. That, yeah. And did you? Yes, ma'am. And is this a picture of what you allege it looked like? When... All of the units had stuff in them just like that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And this is the floor that you painted? Yes. Is that the floor that they painted? One of the three. Okay. So they painted the floors. Did you paint anything else other than the floors? Well, we painted the walls. They painted the Sorry. walls. They it dripped the on the floors. They are. Okay. So they're brand new flooring. You were told it wasn't, it didn't have to be perfect. Just a second. You didn't put these floors in, did, did you? I thought they painted them. No, no. Um, they were to do touch up only. And there were, there was one unit that needed to be finalized. And that was the one you saw that was bad. We were having and the, to the floors were brand new. I told you, don't speak when he is. I'll come back to you. The floors were brand new, and like I said, I, I provided drop cloths and such. They didn't no, use them. That's what, not what Shh. What is this? That's the one unit that was not com that wasn't uh, completely was not emptied out. Okay. This one. Yeah, there was one single unit. And this one. That's the same unit. And this. Same unit. Okay. And the rest of them were cleaned out. Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? All new floor. Yes, the pictures of the, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. The pictures of the mess are all one, one unit. unit of the 20. Okay. 
And how many units did they paint for you, Mr. Ricks? They didn't finish any of the units. They, okay. were, in, they were in three units, Your Honor. Okay. And three Shh. units have damage. Okay. What you're telling me is they didn't do a good job in three units. Correct. Okay. Well, they that, didn't sir, it at all. that, I'd like to see the photographs of what they didn't finish. The, the paper copies? There you go. Um, and you, there's, there should be one that's a door that's not even painted. You can see it's two-tone. And the flooring is where they, I guess, scraped the floor. Okay. This is the same picture um, there's, as there's, this. No, that's different. I can show you on my phone, too, if you'd like. They're different. They're, it, it's like in one of the areas, they tried to use a tool to scrape paint off in different areas, and that's what was that's left. Incorrect. You're talking you about... Me with any tools. That's not true. There was no tools provided for us at all. Just a I didn't ask you anything. Sorry. Is what you're saying to me, sir, that the reason you didn't... I, I assume you weren't paid for this work. Is that correct? No, you're no. Right. Not even for cleaning out that unit, really. Shh. Weren't paid. Now... I assume, Mr. Ricks, that you didn't pay them because you thought that they did a poor job. No, ma'am, that's not accurate. Why didn't you pay them? They didn't do the job. They worked there at some point. I um, agreed with Harland only to pay him $3,000. Harland, that was you. Yes. That's you. You agreed with Harland. For that job. Yes. Your Honor, that's For $3,000. You're almost finished. Do you understand? You're almost done. One, two, three warnings, then I'm finished with you. And, and it wouldn't bother me at all. I have to tell you, it wouldn't bother me at all. Now, what arrangement did you make as far as payment is concerned? On June... Mr. Hendrickson started the job first on June 23rd. He was to meet me, and he did. He was late. He was supposed to meet me early. I showed him the whole scope of the project because he hadn't been there and what I wanted done, what I expected. And we agreed on the price of three thousand dollars. And hard. after they got halfway done, which was ten units, I would pay them fifteen hundred dollars. And then when they were complete, I would pay the entire three thousand. They didn't get past three, Your Honor. Three of the twenty. Yes, ma'am. And they didn't finish any of those at all. Okay. What I'm saying to you, Mr. Ricks, you took one guy, right, who you didn't know from a hole in the wall. Yes, ma'am. You took a second guy who you knew was there because. I believe that you knew he was there painting with Mr. Right. Joyner. Right, Mr. Hendricks actually fired him twice. You can see in text message if you need to see that. You mean Mr. Hendrickson fired Mr. Joyner? Yeah, he says right oh, here. Oh, correct, just, Your Honor. just a second. Well, let me just pull up the text message since it's so But you do know that Mr. Joyner was there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. They were, they were, it was a group, they decided to do a group thing. This is the, right here it says, never mind, no, no, no one's going to help me anymore. Group chat. And then there's an additional where he says again that I'm gonna let Noah have a couple of days off. Just a second. Mr. Hendrickson, so on the 29th, you indicated to Mr. Ricks that Noah, that would be you, is not going to be helping me anymore. Yes. Yes, and you wanna tell me why? Noah and I had- No, look at me. Noah and I had an argument at the painting job. Tell because me about we were the arguing. Tell me about the argument, sir. We when did you have it? We were about the detail that we were putting into our work. I walked in and Noah was paying a lot of attention to detail and Chris told me that the job did not have to be perfect. He just no, no, wanted no. it to be just done. No, 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 just a second. So Noah was trying to be careful. Yes. And you said you don't have to be so careful. Yes, Your Honor. Is that what it boils down to? Yes, Your Honor. And that was on the 29th. Yes, correct. So after that, he said he's not gonna work for you anymore. Correct. Now, so I gather from that statement that since you were working there since the 23rd, you didn't feel as if you had to be so careful to detail. That is I mean, correct. that would follow from what you just said to me. If Noah wanted to be more careful to detail, you said, oh, no, you don't have to be so careful to detail. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? And goodbye, which is what this says. So I have to assume conjure up in my mind that if you don't have to, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be such a great job. It can be, as my great grandmother used to say, there's a difference between a schmearer and a painter. That's right. Now, I don't know who would understand that except another Jewish grandmother. But you understand the connotation. You can schmear paint. I have a nine-year-old granddaughter who can schmear paint on a wall. But if I want something professionally done, I try to get a painter. I told Chris I was not a professional. Just a second. You see, that's my problem with Mr. Ricks. If you want something done right, get a man, not a boy. 
Christopher Ricks. Claims Noah Joyner and Harlan Hendrickson slandered his business on social media. Noah and Harlan say they were not paid for painting Christopher's apartment complex. Now, if I wanted somebody to work on one of my cars, I would not get somebody off the street who was selling popcorn at a concession stand and say, by the way, my car over there needs a new battery. Now, would I take my car back to the same dealership? Maybe not, because they're very expensive. But would I find somebody who at least had a referral, a recommendation? I have a 20-unit apartment complex that was empty. You want to use it as a business. You don't hire two schmearers to go, to go and take well, care of your property. Them. But you have to, if you didn't like their work, fire them. And if their work was not complete and only three units were touched, which I don't think that they argue with, so far, that's correct, Mr. Hendrickson? That is incorrect. How many units did you Five. paint? Five. And I actually painted seven, but I didn't complete the last two. I just okay. did the trim. In so it. you completed five units out of 20. Yes. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And you agreed to $3,000. That's incorrect, Your Honor. How much? We did not have a meeting to talk about a payment until the 29th. And that was actually part of the reason that him and I were arguing. Um, Chris and I and Noah met at a coffee shop and we spoke about how much we would be getting paid. We agreed on a $3,000 price for the end of the month of July because Christopher was supposed to be going on a vacation until July 20th. So $3,000 was mentioned. And it was mentioned and then he told me and Noah, Chris told me and Noah that on the 30th he would pay us half of what he was going to be paying us. Just a second. You were hired to paint 20 units. Yes, Your Honor. You painted five, which is one quarter of the $3,000. Yes, ma'am. Let's say those apartments were complete, not satisfactorily to him, but now you both agree that the $3,000 price was mentioned for the 20 units. Yes. It would be $750 if they did five units? That's all, $750. That would be $750 if you completed only a quarter of them. Okay. Did you pay them any money for painting, yes or no? No. Okay, good. So best case scenario for the painting is $750. And I haven't gotten to his counterclaim yet, but you have one more claim. And your claim is that Mr. Ricks vandalized your car by throwing paint on it. Strong. Tell me when that happened. We woke up July 20th, 2020. 7.20, where did you wake up? At our house, our apartment. Hospital okay, Arkansas. tell me what happened. I woke up to my car being splattered with the same color paint that uh, we were using in his apartments. Okay, so your car had paint on it when you woke up. Did you see anybody do it? No, ma'am. Just let me take a look at the photograph. Okay, did you file a police report? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it. So no one saw this, but you say that there is a video that you have. I assume, Mr. Ricks, unless you want to tell me that you did, in fact, throw paint primer on no, his car. I absolutely did not. Okay, and you did not see anybody throw paint primer on Fair the on. car. But you say there was a video. Noah stated that he has video from his apartment apartment complex pointing right at Noah's vehicle. I think the police put that in there because they had interviewed. So there is no video? No, ma'am. And you did not witness this? No, ma'am. And other than thinking that this paint primer was a result of actions and retaliation for something that you did, do you have any witness that saw him do that? No, ma'am. I have to see proof that the defendant had anything to do with this car. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you take the car in to be cleaned? Um, yes, I cleaned it myself just to avoid further damage. Yes. But after I cleaned it, I took it to the audio, auto body shop to see what the actual repair was. Okay, do you have pictures of it after you cleaned it? After we cleaned it, it looked somewhat like this. And then we had to take it to the body okay, shop. We 
They buffed out the rest of it for okay. us. So what you're telling me is you took it to an auto body shop and the auto body shop... They helped clean up the rest of it, but they still took off our top coat. Okay, very good. Well, you have no proof he did it. So far, he owes you $750. May I interject that he doesn't even own that I car? I don't care. I'm not giving him any money for the car. There's no proof you did anything to the car. Okay, I'm not going to get into filing a false ABC complaint with the sheriff because he's not going to be able to prove to me that it's true other than by what he says are his own observations. He doesn't have anybody here who's under the age of 21 who's going to testify that you served him alcohol. So I'm not going to entertain that part of your claim. Money owed for slander, that I would like to see. That's there a cross complaint. So far, plaintiff has $750 for painting one quarter of the places that he was contracted to do. This is the first um, document and I had calls just pour in, um, wanting to know if I'd seen it. And just then, a second. Don't mm -hmm. tell me you had calls pouring in, sir, because yes, that's hearsay. What's the date on this? This one that I'm reading. I says one day ago. It was around the first couple of weeks of July. Okay. I'd like you to tell me, Mr. Joyner, the conversation, where it took place, and under what circumstances, when you had a conversation with Mr. Ricks about covering up certain hazards. I'd like to hear that. What would you like to hear? I'd like to hear where the conversation took place, exactly what you said to him and what he said to you. Where it took place? Yes, where it took place, exactly what you said to him and exactly what he said to you. I'm confused, so like, what is, what are we, what is? We are on now. I know the, a, the post a, about a the- post. Yeah. We're on now a post. So I want you to tell me when you had the conversation where you were and what you said to him, mostly what he said to you, about covering up certain things with paint. Okay, yes ma'am. So we were told to cover up holes and stuff with caulking and then paint over it. And then we were told that I was- Now look told, at me. I was told to go declutter one of the units that had a bunch of old parquet tile, ceramic tiles, piled high to the ceiling with old ceiling fans. Well, that's, deteriorating. yeah, that was the unit that was on right. Go ahead, right. and? So we, he told me that I I had, want you to tell me the worst thing he told you to do in the apartment complex. Tell me the worst thing he told you to do. There was a lot of terrible No, 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 no. <laughs> Just stop and think of what is the worst thing he told you to do, the worst instruction he gave you. Pretty much that I should just do it without the proper protective. No, that's that's general, sir. Okay. I asked you specific. You posted something about him, about his apartment complex, about the work that you were doing, and I want you to tell me the worst thing he told you to make short shrift of or to cover up. Mm, water damage, black mold. Okay, let's go to black mold. When did you have a discussion with him about black mold? The Where day were he you? Told me to declutter the apartment. So that would be Wednesday, June. So there was one apartment that he told you to declutter. Okay, and that would be June what? Monday, June 27th, I'm, I think that's what that is. Was he there in person? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'd like you to tell me what he said to you and what you said to him. Told me to go- Look here, look here. Told me to declutter the unit, take, off, uh, take out all of it, throw it away, and to just- No, no, don't look over there. To clean, look. just to clean it, basically. To clean it. So that it would be ready to be painted. And? I did, I cleaned it. And? I'm done. You're done? I don't know what else to say, that's... Well, I want you to clean it doesn't tell me anything about black mold. I don't know what you were wanting from me. <laughs> what I want you to do is to tell me what he told you about black mold. Don't make it up. Defendant Christopher Ricks claims Noah Joyner and Harlan Hendrickson slandered his business on social media. Noah and Harlan say they were not paid for painting Christopher's apartment complex. Now, tell me what he told you about black mold. He didn't tell me anything about the black mold. Right. And what did he tell you about rat feces? Didn't tell me anything about rat feces. I handled all that stuff Shh. about the mold. Then you did that all yourself. Well, in this posting you said, Chris, that would be you, wanted us to paint over chips, possible, dust, maybe, mold, never. He never told you that. That's what you just told me. Black mold, rat feces, and urine. He never told you to cover up those things. He may have done it, but according to you, he just said, clean it. He had told and you that, to cover up the mold that was uh, in oh, the I don't believe that. of the upper. Oh, I don't believe that. In a second, 
That's Mr. Joyner. Yeah, it was Mr. No, Joyner, this is Mr. Joyner's post. Together. And he never told him anything. According to him, he said, just clean it. Can you have the second post? That one was taken down. And this is the second post that he reposted. And then his account got blocked because they don't allow that type of behavior. This is the next one. And this is where he claimed to be a bartender on Facebook. And he just took it down recently. It's been up there for months. And I never hired him for a bartender. That's all right. I don't care. That's not important. Okay. What I'm concerned about is what he says that you told him to do, which you did not. Right. He acknowledges you did not. Now, you have no witnesses here. Um, I was going to bring one person and she's got I, COVID. Should have, would have, could have. You no, have yes, no I witnesses have no one. here. I have no one, Your Honor. Very good. Okay. I find that the things that you posted are slanderous with regard to what he instructed you to do, Mr. Joyner. You were the posting person as far as covering up black mold, feces, and urine, and therefore to beware of Rick's realty. Your post, based upon your testimony, was slanderous because he never told you that. So... Uh, but you never really cleared that. I'm sorry. You never really cleared it up. I got confused. I don't know what you were really trying to, like, ask out of me. Yeah, just a second. It was I don't told care what... to me that I needed uh, to take care of all that stuff and throw it away. Yes, ma'am. It was told to me that. Just a That's second. That's why I posted it. It was a warning as to, like, so no one else would have to deal with that same very, stuff. Very, very good. Very good. I'm ruling now, so now it's my time. I asked you specific questions. You gave me answers. Now is not the time to play catch up. I find that by posting that he instructed you to cover up black mold, people responded to actually, and rat feces, I don't know how you cover rat feces and urine with paint, and to stay away from his place of business without cause, because what you told me was he told me to clean it up, that that's slanderous. And so on the counterclaim that he has for slander, I am awarding him $2,750. That's a net net to him of $2,000 because your claim of $750 for wages is absorbed by his counterclaim. So on your claim, you get zero. Zippity doo dah. I'm awarding him $2,000 for slander. We're done here. Thank you very much. What we about are, the damages, we Your are Honor? finished. Hire a professional, Mr. Riggs. You want a schmearer? That's what you get. This court is adjourned. Regardless of terminology and how things got messed up, why would you expect someone to clean up rat feces, all of this stuff, and do it for free? It's clear no good deed goes unpunished. I tried to help those kids. I don't understand any of this, really. Well, they were trying to extort money from me and not do work and be lazy and just get paid for work they didn't do. We're trying to move on. We're going to move on. <laughs> I kind of try to give people chances when they're down on their luck. I've always been a philanthropist to try to help people out, and sometimes you get burned. First of all, if you're an employee and you're working either by the hour or by the day, you're not a weekly employee but you, or bi-weekly salary employee, you're supposed to keep track of the hours where you work, especially if you want to s if there is a potential of suing later for them. As a plaintiff, that is your burden. I was interested to see that you were willing to take that information from the defendant because if it were me, if the plaintiff didn't have it, that's not the defendant's burden to well, prove the plaintiff's true. case. So I, I knew you did it to sort of round out the the sides of the case, but I think that if you as the plaintiff want to come here and ask the court for money, you better have your ducks in a row. And well, that's true. Huh? That was true. That was probably an error for me. <laughs> not that he got anything, but... We got um, where we needed to go. We but... got where we needed to go, but that's true. It's not the defendant's burden. Yeah. Although the defendant acknowledged that he worked for him. He did. Very forthcoming and honest, So, but that, again, played better for the defendant, as we saw in the ruling, that he was professional. You're supposed to have your ducks in a row. Yes, and as a plaintiff, you don't get any money if you can't even keep track of the hours that you work. The second thing is that the call to alcohol and beverage, you know, if you feel as if you're doing a public service by reporting behavior that you think could be potentially dangerous, I support that. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it as a retaliatory act and you don't do it immediately, it's like reporting suspected child abuse. Mm -hmm. If you see a child being abused or neglected and you do nothing, and wait a month until you have a fight with the person mm -hmm. who is the abuser, that creates a suspicion that it's vindictive and there's a motive to lie. Of course. Because it wasn't done immediately. And they sought another job from the same man after reporting him. Right. You know, to the defendant's detriment, in my eyes, is if you have a big apartment complex and you have guys who 
were, were in the jewelry business and didn't make it, then came to work for you in your theater and really weren't very good at that either, then I wouldn't hire them to house paint. Yeah. You know, that actually without, requires a skill. With, with, without, any, without any credentials. So I think that you have to be careful if you have a valuable piece of real estate. Agreed. Anyway, he can't slander him, and he did. I think it all worked out how it was supposed to. I hope so. Melissa Duran is suing her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, for wrongful eviction and an assault. Court come to order. All rise. Be seated, please. Case 2097, Duran versus Shaw. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Duran, the defendant is the property manager at a place where you used to live. Yes. And you are suing her for evicting you from that place. You want a whole bunch of money. You're suing her for $10,000 for your moving expenses, for assault, for emotional distress because you had to move. Ms. Shaw says that your behavior caused you to be evicted. You violated the rules, and that's why you were served notice of eviction. So first, let me know when you started living at the property that is managed by the defendant. In 2018. Did you have a lease? Yes, I did. did do you have a copy of that lease with yes, you? Yes, I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Okay, so this initial lease was August of 2019, and it terminated on July 31st, 2020. It provided for three people to live in the apartment. Okay, and was the lease renewed? Nope. Okay, and so then you became a month-to-month -month tenant. Yes. And that was in February of 2020. They also increased the rent. That's okay, they're allowed to do that. That's a business. No, I know. They're allowed to do that. When your lease was extended on a month-to-month -month basis after February of 2020, would you tell me if the same people lived in the apartment as were on the original lease? No. So more people moved in? Yes. Who? That would be my sister and my mother. Sisters? Yes. Two sisters? Yes. They and were when did they move in? Maybe about, uh, maybe 2020, maybe? I'm not, couldn't really be positive. So that would have been in violation of your original lease? Yes. And it was an apartment that you were yes. renting. And the apartment complex has a pool. Yes, it does. And the incident around, circumstances surrounding this eviction that was served on you, that happened in what month and year? It was in um, June of this year. How long, Ms. Shaw, have you been the property manager? Since the end of November of last year. November of 2021. Yes. And in November of 2021, did you know that there were additional people living in the house? Yes. And didn't tell her that they had to vacate, that it was in violation of the terms of her underlying le lease? I had that morning, actually, when the confrontation happened. No, I'm I had talking just... about, shh, pay attention. I... My question was, did you register any complaint with the plaintiff? about the additional people living there. Be very careful that you tell me the truth because I know that you think you may know where I'm going, but you don't. Did you make any complaint to her November, December, January, February, March, April, or May? The answer is either yes or no about the other people okay. living in the house. No. So I guess I'm going to start with you because an incident occurred that resulted in her being evicted, that you're serving her with a notice of eviction. Right. Tell me when that took place, because I have to know what your reason was. That's a fair statement. Yes. Right. Okay. So in June 22, like I said, that morning I had served on What that morning? Week, June 21st or something, I believe. What kind of letter were you serving on her? Um, I just gave them, mine is, uh, it's just a complaint notice, you know, saying that- Do you have a copy of that? I may. You know what she's talking about? Yes, I have a copy. Of I'd like to see it. There you go. Okay, well, this is a letter that says you and your company were eating and drinking in the pool area. Even after I told them to stop that it wasn't allowed, they did not stop. And there is absolutely no eating or drinking in the pool area. Okay, so that's the letter she yes. served to you 
and that was on June 21st. That's the last she was Now, who was, eating, who was eating and drinking in the pool? That would be my sister. That wasn't just your sister. No, it was her and her friend. No, no, just a second. Let's get it together. So your sister, who wasn't supposed to be there, but they sort of let that skate. Oh. Who well, wasn't okay. supposed to be there. Okay. Okay, so your sister and who else? That would be my sister, um, her boyfriend, and two of her friends, or three of her friends, I think. Had they ever been to the pool before? My sister has, but not her friends. So the person who wasn't supposed to be living with you, that's your sister, Yes. invited her boyfriend and three other friends to the pool. She called and asked if it was okay first. She asked you? Yes. And you said fine? Yes. You didn't call the manager? No. Okay. And you are aware that there's no eating and drinking in the pool? That's not what it says on my lease. Is that what it says at the pool? Nope. Does it say anywhere in the house rules? Nope. Nope, it's not an answer. Oh, I'm sorry. The answer no. is no. No, ma'am, it is not. No. Now, when you've been living there for a long time. Do you use the pool? Yes, I do. Ever had any trouble in the time from November of yep. last year? Ever had any complaint? Nope. Nope no, is not sorry, an answer. Sorry, sorry, no sorry. is the answer. No, yes. no complaint. Okay, no, sorry. Okay. And did you discuss with your sister and her friends that there were any rules that she had to abide by? No, I did not because I was not home yet. Stand up. First name is? Aaliyah. You were their boyfriend and three girlfriends. Any children? No. You know this lady? Yes. What happened when she came to tell you that there was no eating or drinking at the pool? So we were standing... Just, just what happened when she told she you? She came screaming at us, telling us that we needed to get the food out and that we needed to go. Get the food out? What kind of food had you brought in? It was just in? pizza and, like, a soda and water. So, you, so it wasn't a piece of fruit. You were having a meal there, pizza yes. Yes. and food. Had you ever seen your sister bring food into the pool area? Snacks, yeah. Yeah. She said, I'm not talking about snacks. Did she ever bring food into the pool area? No. What prompted you to order food into the pool area? It was a hot day and we were hungry and I'm not sure. You asked your sister if it was okay if you and your friends came. Yes. Since you never saw anybody, because usually there are signs posted yes. around a pool. I've lived in enough places to know in the Pool signs usually say no jumping yes. in the pool, no food or drink around the pool, right? Yes. Most pools say that. Yes. Did this pool say that? It just said, like you said, no jumping in the pool, no diving um, to come into the pool, but it never said nothing about food, drinks, nothing like that. Really? Yes. Okay. So now you please establish to me, Miss Shaw, that there was notice that there was no food and drink at the pool. And their pool had ended. May I see? And then also no guest addendum. Just a second. It's all part of their... Hold on. You're Melissa Duran. Yes, I am. And that's your signature. Yes. Yes. The pool is reserved exclusively for the use of residents of the building. That's what it says. Okay. That's what you signed. No diving in the pool area. No intoxicated persons. Okay. I just want you to show me here. First of all, the only thing that they are violating is that... Pool is reserved exclusively for the residents of the building. That's it here, but I don't see anything about food. The new pool addendum wasn't part of their contract. So when we put out the new one, it was it was for my more updated tenants, but we we didn't we Just serve a second. them on the Her food. We served them on the guests. Is what you're saying to me. The only thing that she signed is this, and there is no sign around the pool that says no eating or drinking. There is a sign by the pool. Do you have a copy I of it? I don't have a copy of that. Why not? Melissa Duran claims her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, owes for a wrongful eviction and an assault. Okay, go ahead. Because she had moved in prior to them changing the pool addendum, I posted the new pool addendum on all of the doors. And I have actually text messages of Melissa asking me, can we, you know, the no floaties? And I said, well, of course, May I? you know, for oh. children and whatnot, but not big floaties. Okay. So she was acknowledging May the pool addendum that I had. That I'll see. Now, she's going to show me your text messages to her. Yes. So you received the revised pool rules. Yes. And did the new pool rules say anything about guests? No, it did not. So if it said nothing about guests, you originally said that the pool is specifically reserved for residents of the complex. Yes. 
And according to you, the new pool rules, do they talk about having floaties in the pool? Yes, it did. Did it talk about having guests at the pool? Yeah, actually it did. And what did it say? It, there was no problem, just like on the, on the original lease. It no, was no, no, no. fine the, to have guests in the pool. No, that, that's if not you, what this says. This says that the pool is reserved for residents of the building only. Well, we were already told before that it was fine to have guests. This is the contract that you signed. Yes, yes, I understand. Okay. So this is the first one that you signed, this one. Mm -hmm. And absent anything else, this says no guests at the pool. This says residents only. Okay. You say that it was the new rules allow you to have guests. Or were they silent? There was nothing on there saying that you cannot have guests. It was okay. mainly just saying that you cannot have floaties, you cannot jump or run into the pool. Well, so, just a second. Did it say anything about food? No. Is there a new sign posted around the pool that talks about food? No, it doesn't. All not. I want to see is Miss Shaw, right. something in the new rules that talks about food. Mm. And I'm getting very bored with this. Now, when Miss Shaw came over and told you you couldn't have food, you had to get rid of the food, yeah. about what time was that? Probably like five, six, I'm not exactly too sure. And when had this food and stuff arrived? Was it? It was, we brought it. We were coming in with the food. We walked in with the food. She, I'm pretty sure Just she's a seen second. This. So you and your group, five people, walked yes. in with dinner yes. to the pool area. And did the dinner include any alcoholic beverages no. like beer? Nope. What kind of drinks were there? It was Pepsi with soda. And what happened when Miss Shaw came over and told you you weren't allowed to have the food at the pool? She came very aggressively. She, okay, she came aggressively and she, she said you're not allowed. She stormed out and screamed, get, out, get the food out and you guys need to leave. And so what did you do? I told her, okay, I'd get the food out and I made a call to my sister to come help me with the food. And as we were packing- Where was your sister? She was upstairs. So when you came out with the food, you came out of the apartment. No, we had just gotten there. We had. We were coming from another pool area that wasn't open. What other open. pool area? My boyfriend's friend. We were going to swim at his pool, but it wasn't available because there's too many people there. Were you at your boyfriend's house during the day? Uh, no, I was at school and they were all at work. So we all just like met up after everything. Okay, so you were asked by Miss Shaw to get the food out and then you called your sister. Yes, and I told her. And then what happened? And I told her if she could come get the food while we swam or if well, not, that we well, were going to leave. Why didn't you just get out? Well, because I was trying to help, because we were splitting the, the check through with the money, so we're like splitting the pizza, who's getting what, and all of that. And before we even could leave, she stormed out again, screaming, saying, you guys are getting a notice, you guys are getting a notice, and running up the stairs to her, because she was coming out. And she was like, you know, like, hey, like, what's going on? And then she was like, you guys are getting a notice. I'm tired of everybody like not listening and coming to me with your problems. And then she, my sister was like, whoa, like, you know, like, hey, like, relax. I'm coming to get the food. And then she threw the paper and my sister backed up like, you know. Okay. She, like, so what, went so aggressive. the letter, she yes. gave your sister the letter. It was a notice. She gave you the paper that said, this is a complaint. There are people in the pool who are eating, drinking. They don't belong here. They're not, whatever she said, here's your notice. Yes. Okay. And that was on the 21st of June. Then yeah. what happened? Well, after she threw the paper at me, um, she turned back around, still yelling, and she stomped down the stairs, and I'm trying to tell her, you didn't give me time to come and get the food. And, and, and she slammed, she ran back in her apartment and slammed her door. And she went back to her apartment, and you went where? Back into my house. Okay, you went back into your house. And yes. what did you do when you went when back into your house? When I got back there, I texted her telling her that I was sorry that they had food in the pool and I did not know that because I did not know at the time. Just a second. So, Ms. Duran, so that, let's cut to the chase, so that you knew they weren't supposed to have food in the pool, only snacks. Yeah, but I didn't know they bring it. I, the thing. Just a second. That's not what I asked you. Okay, I'm sorry. You knew that there was no food in the pool, only water and snacks. Okay, yes. So you knew that. Okay, yes. Okay. Now, if you know that and you have given, I'm just telling you what the law is. Mm -hmm. If you know that, that there is a rule and you don't convey that, that's your problem. Okay? Okay. All right, so that's June 21st when guests that you agreed to have in the pool. You didn't know that there was food there. You knew that there wasn't supposed to be food there. That knowledge is imparted to your guests. That's a legal assumption. I want to know what happened after June 21st. When were you served with a three-day notice to quit? I believe it was on the 24th. 
I'd like to see it. Okay. I have three of the same. They sent me three of them. I right. just have to see one. Did the attorney, who you say you gave by a cash app, by a cash app, return any of the money? Okay, well, you served this three-day notice to quit, Ms. Shaw, and in it, you are alleging threatens to commit a crime. So I assume that the person, it talks about a statement, threatens to commit a crime. I assume that the threat was directed to you. Yes. In any event, you were given a three-day notice to quit, but actually you managed to get that extended to 30 days. Yes. And one of the things that you had to do was to hire an attorney. Yes. And when you hired an attorney, did you hire an attorney and pay a retainer? Oh, yes, I did. Okay. I'd like to see proof of what you paid the attorney. I don't think I'd bring the one that pertained to the lawyer. What I do have is him finding out what the criminal act was. No. You're a month-to-month -month tenant. Yes. Landlord has a right to give you a 30-day notice and say, you have to quit the premises. You have no legal right to be there. My only question is, you were not given 30 days notice. You were given a three-day notice. And I'm not actually convinced that there was a basis to give you a three-day notice. To Duran has accused her former property manager, Tracy Shaw, of wrongfully evicting her. Tracy claims Melissa was violating apartment rules. Now, if you got 30 days, and the reason you got 30 days is because you retained an attorney, I'm prepared to look to see how much you paid the attorney, because that's an expense that you have that you wouldn't have had but for the three-day notice to quit. They're entitled to tell you to leave. I mean, yes. you're there with too many people living in the apartment. They've already had a kerfuffle because you allowed your sister and her boyfriend and friends to come to the pool. They were told no food. They ignored them. But I don't think any of that rises to the level of grounds to give you a three-day notice to quit. I think that if they want to tell you that you have to be out in 30 days, that's reasonable. But they didn't. They gave you a three-day notice forcing you to hire an attorney. I'm prepared to give you the attorney's fees if you prove to me that you paid an attorney. I, I do have proof of that, but I do not have it with me. Okay. And how much did you pay him? That's an easy thing for me to verify. Um, I believe it was no. 1200 I want you to think about it carefully. No, it, it was 1200 because he had lowered it. He lowered it from 1400 to 1200 And you paid him by check or cash? I paid him in um, cash app is the only thing, the only way I could. Did he go to court with you? We never, we haven't. This is the first court we have been to. So how did he get you 30 days? Because I got the three-day notice and it kept saying I committed a criminal act. Okay, let's. So that was the reason why I obtained the lawyer so he can find out what the criminal act was. And just by phone calls, he got them to extend it to 30 days. So yes. you were never in court and you left after the 30 days. I left before the 30, I left on August 1st. Okay, and where did you go? I had to move all the way to Atwater, California. Is that where you live now? Yes, it is. And who lives with you? My husband and um, my young son. That's it, just the three of us. We moved into a smaller, more expensive place. Okay, and you left your sisters? And my mother. And your mother. They are some more completely different. Okay, what do you... This is in their lease about um, disturbances and threats. Listen, I've already made a determination that the three-day notice should have been a 30-day notice to leave. I don't think that anything that I've heard today rises to the level of giving people who've been in the apartment as long as they had, especially over pizza, requires a three-day notice. So the only question that I'm entertaining on behalf of the plaintiff and the only monetary award that I'm going to contemplate are attorney's fees. Mm -hmm. Did the attorney, who you say you gave by a cash app, return any of the money since he never had to go to court for you? No, he did not. Just a second. If I called him well, right now, would he tell me that you paid him $1,200? Yes. yes, he would. Yes, he would. Though what I was going to tell you is that I did not have enough to pay him completely. I still owe him $250. So you didn't pay him. So you paid him $950. Okay, I, okay. I'm sorry. What do you mean, okay? I didn't, no, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't. You, so you paid him $950? Yes. I'm awarding you $950, which are your attorney's fees, for the reason that, for, I'm speaking, for the reasons that I've stated, because they have an absolute right to give you a 30-day notice. 
tell you to leave. And there was a basis for it, actually. And you know, there was a basis for saying your guests, which is you, are not abiding by the rules. You're a month to month tenant. Right now, we do not intend to keep you as a tenant. We're giving you 30 days notice to find another place. I think that would have been absolutely a problem speaking. Would have been absolutely appropriate. I think a three day notice to quit was inappropriate given the level of infraction. So I'm awarding you the council fees because that's what it took to get you your 30 days. This case is over. Thank you very much. Thank you. This court is adjourned. Oh, I'm disappointed in the decision. Her actions of her aggression, throwing something in my face, that was a little bit excessive. I don't feel that I got to say uh, more of the story that continued to happen. Her actions caused me to get evicted in three days. They have bad character, and so I don't think that I owe them anything. I mean, I didn't think anything like what come to this, you know. I'm just glad they're gone. I'm happy to be out because I just really wanted her to be held responsible for what she did. So a trend I've seen a lot here is plaintiffs suing for wrongful eviction when they're a month-to-month -month tenant. And from what I've learned in landlord-tenant law in New York, I know it varies a lot from state to state, is the landlord only has to give you as much notice as your term, which if you're a month-to-month -month tenant would be 30 days. So people have to really understand the legalese of their contract and of their lease because if you feel like you're being wrongfully evicted as a month-to-month -month tenant, that's a different standard than if you have a standard year-long written lease. lease. Well, that's sort of the reason. I didn't think that the one instance that was raised was sufficient to give them a three-day emergency notice to mm -hmm. quit. Might have been enough, that coupled by the fact that there were too many people living in the apartment, to give them a 30-day notice. That is, you're right, it's your property. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think it rose to the level of a three-day notice to quit for threats. I didn't either, so I agreed with your 950 judgment yeah. for the attorney's fees. I would have been happier if she had some sort of a receipt or something from her cash app yeah. because she very quickly changed the 1200 to 950. Mm -hmm. She was honest. I think the right thing happened. Angela Landy is suing her former employee, Alashani Wyatt, for stealing clients and breaching their employment agreement. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2112, Landy versus Wyatt. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Wyatt, when did you become an esthetician? I was licensed as an esthetician in March of 2021. Okay. Ms. Lindy, this is what your case is about. You hired Ms. Wyatt for your business. You have a spa business, is yes, that what I it do, is? Yes, Your Honor. How long have you had the business? I've been in operations as an S Corp since 2016. I worked for myself as a sole proprietor since 2009. How many employees did you have in 2020 and 21? In 2020, it was during the pandemic. We were shut down most of the time. In 2021, there was up to five employees, not including myself, Your Honor. It was six of us total. Does that include Ms. Wyatt? It does, Your Honor. When did she start working for you? She started working for me in February of 2021 as a receptionist. I hired her as a receptionist. A, okay. Not an esthetician? No, Your Honor. Okay. Were you going to school at the time? I was not hired in February. I didn't get my license until March of 2021. What the plaintiff says is you were hired in February. She probably has documents to work as a receptionist. I was not hired I you didn't even have my license you, then. Did you have any proof that she started in February? Your Honor, I have proof that she... Was she on your payroll? She was on my payroll. Okay, so that's What we have be... document of in that is that she started brand new as a receptionist. Maybe it was in March of 21. Okay. I have my first paycheck stuff. I'd like to see it. Okay. This is a pay stub from April. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. This is your claim. Your claim is that when Miss Wyatt came to work for you, subsequently as an esthetician, which she was, because she counted her among your six employees in 2021, that she had signed a contract which provided for certain restrictions should she leave. You don't have that contract. I cannot find it. It was supposed okay. to be. Okay. You don't have that contract. Nope. Ms. Wyatt, when you went to work for the plaintiff, do you recall 
signing a document? I do recall signing documents stating like what my job title was and like the documents that would go towards what we went over and things like that for training purposes. Okay. Your Honor, I have non-solicitation, non-disclosure agreement documents of employees. There's four. Okay. I, yeah. Is this an employee of yours? No, it is not, Your Honor. Ever? Was ever? Never been an employee. Were either one of those two people employees, former yeah. employees? Tabitha Brown was. Was this a former employee Tabitha of yours? Tabitha Brown was a former employee. At approximately the same time? She was an employee of mine for five years up until April 17th, Your Honor. Did she voluntarily leave or did you... She voluntarily left. left. Okay. Did she voluntarily leave to go to work with the defendant? I did not know that until the day the but, defendant left. But ultimately yes. you determined that she did? Sure did. Okay. She was with you for five years? Sure. Yes. I assume that if you have a business and you don't have this contract, which you allege if you could produce, had a specific non-compete clause in it, but you don't have it. She remembers signing something, but she doesn't remember exactly what it was. Can you stand up? Tell me your name. Tabitha Brown. Miss Brown, did you sign a contract when you went to work for the plaintiff? Yes, I didn't remember that I did. You did? did. Yes. But you did? Yes. Okay. Do you have a copy of her? I sure do. And Just a second. Okay. Do you have a copy of it? I don't. No. But you have a copy of what she signed? Yes. I'd like to see it. Your Honor. No, 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 no. No. Just let me see the copy. I'm trying to reconstruct something just to get some general parameters of this case. Tabitha Brown, March 22nd, 2022. Yes. Different. Oh. That is not the non-solicitation, non-disclosure agreement. That's a different agreement. Those are contracts she has signed. Oh. Well, you gave me two things. What is this? One is her non-disclosure, non-solicitation, and also the second one is the role definition of an esthetician working for me. Looking at the non-compete. Okay, this is pretty standard. Kevin, would you show this to Ms. Brown? And I also want you to show it to Ms. Wyatt. That clearly your signature. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And so that says within one year of your leaving Ms. Landy's employment, you will not work in a related field within seven miles from her current place of business. Yes. When you left her employment, did you go to work with Ms. Wyatt? We left to share. Yes. The answer is either yes, yes or no. So you did. You yes. went to work with Ms. Wyatt. And when you went with Ms. Wyatt, that was sometime in 2022. Yes, ma'am. What month? May of 2022. Your Honor, that's incorrect. Shh, shh, don't. I'm not needing your help. Okay. Jilla Landy claims her former employee. Alashani Wyatt stole clients and breached their employment agreement. Now, does Miss Wyatt have a location, a shop, a store, a place of business, or does she operate out of her residence? We share a space. You share a space where? Uh, at a salon studios in Valencia. Have you calculated the distance between that space and Miss Landy's office? I have, ma'am. And how far is it? 3.4 miles. Well, you're not allowed to do that, pursuant to the terms of your agreement. Correct. I don't have a copy of that agreement now. Well, I have it here now, but at the time I didn't. It's from five years ago, and I never received a copy of that. So it was. I don't know whether you received a copy of it or not. It's your signature, and it's pretty standard fare. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's not standard fare. So, Miss White, what I have to do is sort of put together whether or not I believe that you, in fact, had the same document that you signed. Correct. And I believe that you did. Okay. Right, the fact she says that you probably mm -hmm. took it when you left. I can't describe that conduct to her, but this is pretty standard fare that within one year, it's not too onerous. It's not within a 50 mile radius. It's a seven mile radius. Three and a half miles are certainly well within that. You could have found some place that was eight miles away and then we wouldn't be in this difficulty, but you didn't. Anyway, so you were in violation of your contract when you left and went to work and shared space with Miss Wyatt. Okay, but you're not suing her. No, ma'am. Why? Because I know the case would be dismissed because of the lack of solicitation between clients and of a former employee. Well, not necessarily. Those two stand alone. Your Honor, if I may say, 
There was a small claims action against Tabitha, but because there was no evidence. What do you mean there was no evidence? I had no evidence the way I have evidence today with Alishani that Tabitha solicited clientele. Okay. Now you can sit down. Thank you. So that small claims case was dismissed. Yeah, it's, there's, I have nothing there, which I learned. I have nothing to stand on the way what I have to stand on today. Well, what you had to stand on, Ms. Landry, which I don't understand, you had a non-compete agreement with her. She's in violation of that agreement. That's all you need. And she violated this agreement. She went to work within seven miles correct, of your place of business. So I don't understand that. In this it, case, in this case, you don't have a physical signed contract. I have to reconstruct whether I believe that there was one. So I don't see why you think that you have all documentation. I don't have documentation. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Due to the fact that I believe she stole the information out of my filing cabinet. I don't know whether she did or not. Right now, you say it's a lost document. You can't find it. Correct. Okay. And the defendant acknowledges and it's usually custom and practice in the business to sign a non-compete when you have that kind of service industry. Right. And I'm prepared to accept judicial notice of the fact that when you go to work for a beauty salon or a hair salon or a spa, you develop a clientele within the spa. You can't open up a store next door and steal the clients. Most people have people sign this, and you did, and you had it done five years ago. So Ms. Brown is in violation of this contract. That is correct. Why somebody dismissed that, I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, so now you're going to demonstrate to me that Ms. Wyatt solicited clients yes. of yours. Yes, Show me. Okay, in July of 2021, Alashani was trained to be an esthetician. Uh, let's not go back to ground zero. I'm not interested. I am assuming for the purposes of this hearing that she signed a non-compete clause, just as Ms. Brown did. So let's start from there. And I asked you a very simple question. I said, what proof do you have that she solicited clients when she left? Your Honor, my solicitation is here. Fine. I'd like to take a look at it. And my witness, Ale uh, Kennedy, is here as well. Well, let's go to Miss Kennedy. Was Miss Kennedy a client of yours? Yes, okay. Your Honor. Would you stand up, please? Your first name? Kennedy. Kennedy. Last name? Johnson. Ms. Johnson, how long had you been a client of Ms. Landy's spa? I want to say about 2019, Your Honor. I was there before the pandemic and was there for a while before it shut down due to COVID. Were you there after it reopened? Yes. COVID. What kind of work do you have done there? I get sugared, which is using sugar, lemon, and I believe it's honey, and water and you mix it together and it takes hair off of you. And who did that for you? I went through many of the clientele and the employees at Angela's shop at the time. So there were several people that, uh, Alicia and I was one of them, as well as Tabitha. How many times did the defendant do the waxing? Sugaring. Sugaring. I want to say at least five times. Do you recall when she left Miss Landry's? I do not remember the date. However, I do remember getting a call from her company um, I got a call saying... From Miss Landry's company? Yes. Yes. Your Honor, it's Landy. Landy. Yes, from Miss Landy's company. They had called me on my cell phone and told me that she was no longer there. And they had okay. told me she was they no longer there. You can't tell me what somebody from her shop told you. That's hearsay. I want to know about the solicitation. Ah. If there was. Yes. So, one point while Alicia, the phone. defendant, was no. there. Sorry. Do you understand? Yes. While the defendant was there, I had gotten sugared on my face. It was a small patch test, or test, excuse me. And after she had texted me, gave me her personal number, and told me if I had any reaction to text her and let her know. After I texted her, I had- And this was while she was working for the plaintiff? Yes, that is correct. Go ahead. And as a while, I started having a small reaction, and I had texted her and sent her a picture of my face and told her that I was starting to have a small reaction. I did not receive anything back for a little bit. And then I want to say around- April, late March. Well, when did you text her? Uh, this text for the face patch, patch was earlier, I want to say early March, maybe February. Do you have the text? I believe she gave it to you. The third one, Your Honor. What date did Miss Wyatt leave your employ? April 22nd is when I got her immediate resignation. April 22nd, 2022. 
And is this what you're referring to? Hey, Kennedy, I forgot to tell you, if you wanted to book with me again, I could put you in my books. I'll be in Valencia. That's correct. And is Valencia where your shop is? 3.2 miles away, Your Honor. No. To answer my question. I have a question. Is Valencia where your shop is? No. That's my question. Why don't you just answer my question? Okay. Angela Landy has accused her former employee, Alice Shawnee Wyatt, of taking her clients and breaking their agreement. So Valencia is not where your shop is. Valencia is where your place of business is. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So you left on the 22nd, is that correct? That's correct. On the 20th, two days before, you tell Miss Kennedy, because I assume that this was a planned move of yours, that she can reach you again at your new place of business in Valencia. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, well, you're not allowed to do that. Um, during the services, it's a very intimate service, so you start to gain a relationship with these clients. And through that time, I felt like I had gained a relationship. It wasn't just a client with Kennedy. So I- You felt, met her yes. through the plaintiff. Yes, Your Honor. You started to work on her through the plaintiff. Yes, Your Honor. She had other people work on her other than you. Yes. She may have liked you better than the other people. That doesn't diminish the fact that you knew that you weren't supposed to solicit clients. You knew that. I believe that you knew that. Yes. Because that's standard fare. So your excuse is you thought you developed a personal relationship with her. Correct, Your Honor. How many other people did you develop a personal relationship with? Majority of the clients that I had who were returning clients of mine, I felt like I had built personal relationships with. If you're potchking around with somebody's face or scrubbing their body or giving them a scrub to get hair <laughs> off on every part of the body, then <laughs> you develop an intimate relationship Correct. with somebody. Now, your first name is Kennedy? Yes. Kennedy, did you ever go out to dinner with Miss Wyatt? No, I did not. She ever invite you to her house? No, she did not. Was the only time you ever saw Miss Wyatt while you were having a service. That is correct. You see, that's not an intimate relationship. That's just stealing clients, Miss Wyatt. Okay. So my question to you is, you're seeking damages, okay? Did you seek injunctive relief? No, Your Honor. Why not? I didn't know about injunctive relief. In addition, because of the staff leaving, because of solicitation, of admitted solicitation by Alashani to my attorney, and I have a sworn affidavit for that. Because of that, I ordered them a cease and desist, and they ignored the cease and desist. Alashani told my attorney that she did no, not. No, you can't solicit. tell. Jump up. Here's you say. can't tell me what she told your attorney. Do you understand? Even if I have an affidavit, is your attorney in the military? No, I just have a notarized affidavit from, from whom? My from attorney. Her? No, I don't take affidavits from attorneys. Okay. It's ridiculous. Are you still in operation, Miss Wyatt? Yes, Your Honor. How many people work for, with, or to you? It's just me. I have my own personal LLC, and she has her own personal LLC, so none of our money is combined. But Miss Wyatt, how many of your former clients from Miss Landy's business followed you? I would say a good portion. I don't have an exact number. Yes. Here you go. Now, just tell me. I would say at least. No, no, no. No, I'm sorry. I don't want you to say I would say at least. I assume you have names, people. I have names and people, people. here. How Honor. many of your clients 20. went to Miss Wyatt? 20. Not were solicited. Follow me very carefully. Not solicited by her, but actually left your business to go with her. Actually left my business to go with her. 20. Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to see. Does that sound right, Miss Wyatt? Yes, Your Honor. Then I don't have to see. She says that that's about right. Your Honor, I would also like to add that after I left, she did send out a mass text allowing all of the clients who had ever seen me to be aware that I was no longer there. So that also allowed more clients to reach out to me in different aspects. No, my dear, you made the mistake. Okay. You made the mistake by opening up an office within a seven mile radius, which you can't do. Okay. You solicited her clients. I thought maybe just one or two, but 20, that's a lot of clients. 20 recurring clients is a lot of clients. Miss Landy's request in her small claims case is the maximum of the jurisdiction, which is $10,000. And I think that she deserves every penny of that. Okay. Because what you did was wrong and a breach of your contract with her. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $10,000. We're Thank finished. you, Your Honor. This court is adjourned. And I have to tell you something, that's ongoing. 
Okay. Just so that you're aware. <laughs> I felt like the work environment was very unstable. I have so many people to testify, including employees, that it's not a hostile work environment. And um, I was constantly anxious there. I was doing so much to improve the quality of the business by changing policies and procedures. I had to do what was best for me and my family. I'm a single mom, so. Hiring a business coach working with an HR team. Let the better business win, I guess. The better business has won. <laughs> I was a little bit confused. Maybe you can shed some light on it for me. Why the plaintiff wouldn't sue for injunctive relief, because injunctive relief is suing not so much for damages, but to get someone to stop doing something. So in this case, it seemed to me that the proper ask per se, would be injunctive relief to stop the defendant from operating her business in violation of her contract. But she didn't do that. She sued for damages no. instead. And I just think that this same problem could keep happening, that I think it's a good lesson for people to educate themselves or hire a lawyer to find the proper relief. Because what's to say that this is going to stop today? I'm sure she'll keep it, seeing the 20 clients. I'm well, sure she's going to keep seeing the 20 clients. Mm -hmm. This judgment today was more compensatory mm -hmm. than punitive yeah. because if she had taken one client with her, well, she's in violation of the contract and some token yeah. violation would have been appropriate, but she took 20 yeah. clients with her. I got the feeling from you that you weren't uh, exactly in line with the $10,000 number until you heard <laughs> until about I heard 20, the 20 clients. I mean, that's really that's business, some really. sort of chutzpah <laughs> to knowing, and I believe she absolutely knew, she was a smart cookie, knowing that you had a non-compete because her friend, mm -hmm. who she also took with her, had the same, same documents language. signed in 2017. So, mm -hmm. And she's clearly a businesswoman, so that would be a consistent practice of hers. I don't know who took the contract out of the file cabinet for another day. I reconstructed it. I actually don't know why she wouldn't sue for injunctive relief as well as punitive damages. It would Audrey Stevens is suing her neighbor, Heather Stevens, for vet bills and pain and suffering after a dog attack. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2139, Stevens versus Stevens. Thank you. You're welcome. Although your names sound the same, they're spelled differently and you are clearly not related based upon this case. You live in the same general area. Yes. Okay. Could you step up? Tell me your name. Emily Ferringer. This is your daughter? Yes. How long have you been living in your house? Eight and a half years. How old are you? 22. Tell me what you do. I work at a bakery right now and I'm a full-time college student. Where do you go to school? Idaho State University. You were out walking the family dog. Yes, I Family was. has one dog? Just one, yeah. What kind of dog? It's a miniature schnauzer. Weighs about 10, 12 pounds? Yeah, around there, 15-ish. How old is the dog? He is nine. You've had him since he was a puppy? Yes. This case has to do with injuries that your dog sustained yes. and the payment of vet bills by the defendant, who you allege has two dogs unleashed that attacked your dog while you were walking. Correct. Him? Just one dog. One dog. One. One dog attacked our dog. You have a pit bull? Yes, ma'am. What color? White and brown. How old? She's five. Is that the only dog you have? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Tell me what date you were walking the dog that this incident happened. July 26, 2021. Time? Around 8 p.m. Dark? No. Still light out? Yes, ma'am. Were you walking in the neighborhood? I was. I was walking down the sidewalk and I passed the defendant's house and I reached the end of the sidewalk. Your dog's name is what? Jax. On a leash? Yes, ma'am. Do you always walk the dog on a leash? We do. Tell me what happened. I was walking down the sidewalk and I reached the end of the sidewalk. I was about to cross the street and- Do you have a picture, a diagram? I do, I have a diagram. Yes. May I see it, please? Oh, okay. There it is. Would you go over to the diagram so that you can point directly and I can understand where this happened? I was standing right here, and I noticed the dog come up on my left side. On your left side? Yes. Did you notice from where the dog came? It seemed to be out in the street when it approached me. So it didn't come from the defendant's house, it came from the street? Yes, it had been on the left-hand side of me. And then the pit bull latched onto my dog on its leg. What color pit bull? 
brown and white. Was there any fighting or a scuffle before? No, ma'am. It just ran up to me and it latched onto my dog's leg and it picked my dog up and was yanking it around in the air. And it was very loud and my dog was squealing a lot and crying out very loudly. So I yanked his leash so that I didn't have to bend down and get hurt myself. And I picked him up and I ran back. So you home. yanked him up by his leash? I did. Okay. Did he have what kind of a collar on? A regular collar or one of those harnesses? We have both, so I'm not sure which one he was wearing at that time, but I believe he was wearing the collar. Just the collar? Yes. So you lifted him up by the collar? Yes. Did you see where the dog went? I do not remember. I think the pit bull ran back into the defendant's household. But you're not sure? I'm not sure. What did you do next? We took the dog to the animal hospital. Okay. You can go back now. Stand close to you. Sorry. Had you ever seen this dog before? I have. Where had you seen the dog before? I've seen the pit bull in multiple places around the neighborhood. I've seen it across... That same dog? Yes. I've seen it across the street in that across the street neighbor's yard. And I've also seen it in my yard. And it's also been next to my chain link fence before. Did you or you, Ms. Stevens, ever have a conversation with the defendant about the dog being unleashed? I have not spoken to her at all. For how long have you seen her unleashed dog out and about? Probably about 10 times. Have you ever said anything to your mother about seeing this dog outside? I have. Okay. I'm listening. Yes, ma'am. May I show you on the... Absolutely. On the diagram? Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. First of all... No, don't tell me first of all. Okay. Were you there at approximately yes. 8 p.m. Yes, on I July 26th? Correct, I was. Okay, where were you? Show me where you were. I was right here. I was loading a fridge into my home. I had my dog right here in the middle of the driveway, chained to the fence, okay? She came from across the crosswalk here, because I have a witness as well to show. She came from the crosswalk with her dog in front of her. She came across right into my driveway. The dog went into my driveway, and my dog went up to her, and they began to fight. You're going like this. Uh-huh, yes. You're going like this. I don't want you to go like this. Okay. So your dog was on a chain. Yes, ma'am. A chain that extended almost to the end of your driveway. Correct. So show me exactly with your finger. Okay, yes, Where? where you say this confrontation between the pit bull and the schnauzer took place. Right here, ma'am. Well, you're pointing to about a f Well, you, now you keep moving your finger. Right here. Audrey Stevens claims her neighbor, Heather Stevens, owes for vet bills after her dog was injured by Heather's pit bull. Now you're moving your finger. So you're saying it's right at the end of your driveway. Yes, ma'am. Just That's... a second. It was up further five seconds ago. Okay. Now My you dog could... was right here, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. The fight okay. occurred right here. Well, now your finger is at a different place, madam. Well, I'm just letting you know your finger moves up the driveway. Right. I'd say right here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You know that I don't believe that. I know you don't believe that. You, Honor, you, know, you know that I don't believe that your dog hasn't been out and about in the neighborhood. Do you know that I don't believe that? I don't think she's lying to me that your dog's been out and about in the neighborhood. Unleashed. No, ma'am. I don't let my dog off a leash. We do have pictures of the dog as well, if you'd like to see those. Luke. Oh, do you? We yes. Do. You mean out and about? Yes. yes. Oh, I'd like to see that. And this is after. Shh, shh. Sorry. I don't care before or after. Yeah. She just said, I don't let my dog go out without a leash. Well, this is the injury. Ms. Stevens, these pictures belie the fact that your dog is out, leashed only. Do you want to see the photograph? Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, Your Honor, I do see that, but I was outside with my dog at that time. I don't time. care whether you were outside with your dog or not. You said your dog is never out without a leash. That's not true. That's not true. Were you a witness to this? Yes, ma'am. Be very careful. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. 
Tell me your name. My name is Karen Brennan. Are you a neighbor? No, I am a friend. A friend of whose? Of Heather Stevens. Go ahead. Well, on that day. On what day? On July 26, I was helping Heather with the fridge. With the, what? With the refrigerator. And I was approaching the driveway. Just a second. You were helping her with the refrigerator doing what? Bringing the dolly out so it can be moved. Bringing the dolly out from where? From the side of the house. And? And I looked over and I saw the little dog and it caught you my eye. You saw what? The little dog. And it caught my eye because every time before, in, in, you know, any time I put the dog out, Miss Stevens' dog, that, that little dog, if it was in the backyard, would continually bark it. Just a second. Did you put the dog out that day? No, I did not that day. But I recognized so the dog. So you did not put the dog out? No. That day? Not that day. Okay. What time did you get to Miss Stevens' house? Uh, Mid-afternoon. What's her dog's name? Lily. Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon? When we were... <laughs> Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon? That's either a yes or a no. When you were there. That's either a yes or a no. Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon when you were there? You said you got there mid-afternoon. This happened at 8 o'clock. Was the dog chained to the fence all the time you were there? Yes or a no? no. Or I don't know. No. No. Where was the dog? In the backyard. Until what time? Until around 7, 7-ish seven or so. I don't know the exact time, but it was mid-evening. Okay. And what happened at that time when the dog was moved from the backyard outside of the backyard? Who moved the dog? We went to go get the refrigerator. No, no, no. Who moved the dog? Heather did. She took the dog from the backyard. Yes. Just a second. To the backyard to the driveway. Just to, to the driveway, because that's where she pointed out that the dog was chained to the driveway fence. Yes. When we came back from the... We went to go get the refrigerator. Just a minute. Well, you didn't tell me, so you left the house. Yes. What time did you leave the house? Mid-afternoon. It was like... What time? Approximately four or five. Okay. And the dog at that time was where? With us in the vehicle. So you had the dog in the car, so the dog was in the backyard. Yes. And then from the backyard, the dog went with you in the car. Correct. And then what? And then we picked up the refrigerator, and we came back, and then she had chained her. Okay. So from the car... From the car, the dog went to the fence, which is chained sort of midway up the fence, according to the defendant, sort of midway up the driveway. Correct. Is where she chained the dog. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Then where did you go? And then I went to go get the dolly and bring it around so we could get the fridge OK. Out. And where did Miss Stevens stay? She was in the driveway. And it was when you were coming out of the backyard that you saw Miss Stevens in the driveway? Yes. And saw the little dog? Yes. She was in the driveway. Was she next to the dog? Go over there and point out where she was. Would you in the driveway? She was... A... She, Miss Stevens? That Miss Stevens, yes. Your friend? Yes. Was right in the middle of the driveway, near where yes. the dog was chained? Yes. And show me where the defendant's house is, because you had been in the house earlier that day. Point on that diagram where the house is. Right here. Where it says defendant. Yes. That's the whole house. And where's the front door? Right here. Up there. And where's the porch on the front door? Right there. Okay. Now, that's not where she was. She was in the driveway. Correct. Okay. Now, go back. Now, I'm going to read to you what your friend, Miss Stevens, wrote and swore to in her answer. I was standing on the porch maneuvering the fridge inside, and I saw a little dog sniffing around and walking up my driveway. She said she was on the porch. Well, she was back... Chip. That's where she said she was, on the porch. I know the plaintiff's dog is a barker, since it has come to the backside of my property and barked at my dog through the fence. The dog walked all the way up the driveway to where my dog was. Now, you want to think back? Miss Stevens says she was standing on the porch. You were very certain she was standing mid-driveway right near her dog. Which one is it? Well, we were been trying to maneuver the fridge. So no, 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 we no, 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 no. Which one is it? Was she on the porch, which is all the way at the other end? Yes. Or was she mid-driveway? Mid-driveway. She was mid-driveway. So yes. Miss Stevens lied when she said she was on the porch. Audrey Stevens is accusing her neighbor, Heather Stevens, of losing control of her pit bull. 
Heather claims Audrey's dog ran onto her property. So Miss Stevens lied when she said she was on the porch. That's what she says in her answer. I was on the porch when this happened. You understand? When, when I... Do you understand? Yes. Sit. Can I see your vet bills, please? Your Honor, I have a video of my dog. Can we present the video that I have brought? You mean for that day? Yes, ma'am. No, that... not for that day. No, not for that day, but just to show you that my dog is not vicious. Oh, what? That she <laughs> likes to play with little dogs. Clearly not on this day. She didn't like to play with other dogs. That dog is constantly barking at my dog in the backyard, and that's the only... My dog loves dogs. I have an obedient record. Miss Stevens, Miss Stevens. Yes. I want you to understand something. Yes, ma'am. Whether the schnauzer is a barker or not a barker, I told you, I didn't believe you when you told me that her dog was off leash. I didn't believe that. Either you or your witness lied. I don't know which one. So I'm going to have to assume it was your witness. Do you want me to assume it was your witness or you? So one of you lied. She says you were in a totally different place. She was coming out from the backyard. That's where she was. She had gone to get the dolly. You said you were maneuvering the refrigerator up on the porch. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, who was telling me the truth? You want to tell me? It was a very hectic day. It was a very happened. hectic day. Yeah. And I have photographs of your dog, despite the fact that you tell me that your dog is never off leash, always on leash. I have three photographs taken three different times of your dog being off leash. Now, there's no question that your dog caused the injuries to the dog. This has been going on for over a year in court. They dismissed it in criminal court. And there's a reason why they dismissed it. I... Just a second. Yes, You're going to try to tell me why they dismissed the case in criminal court? You have a document. I mean, I understand that they filed a criminal case against you. There was a criminal case that was dismissed, Your Honor. That's okay. That has nothing to do with this civil proceeding. You know, somebody may not want to put you in jail because you let your pit bull roam around without a leash. Somebody may not want to put you in jail, but you are clearly responsible for this dog's injuries. You are. If you have a pit bull, and pit bulls can be dangerous dogs, they can turn on a dime and cause serious injury. Pit bull lovers, I don't want to hear from you. I've been going through it for 25 years. Some of them are nice. Some of them are not nice. But when they're not nice and they turn, they have configurations that can cause a great deal of injury. One killed a woman who was babysitting for it. I understand you. you, do you so you I do believe, understand. I you believe, do. I believe, may I say something? I believe that a dog is how it was raised. Okay? I've raised that dog from a baby. She's, not, she's never been mean like that. That dog that lives next door, which is Miss Stevens' dog, yaps at my dog every single day. She goes outside, yaps, 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 yaps at her. So what you're telling me is your dog... <laughs> so if what you're telling me is that your dog had the right to be aggravated because the dog yaps at her all the time, that's not a reason to let any dog, but especially a dog that has potential to cause injury, out without a leash, and you do that regularly, and you can't do that. Your Honor, can I also add that I did have a brief interaction with Miss Stevens on the day that it occurred, and it seemed like she did come out of the street with the dog. I don't believe she was in the driveway. She offered help for me. She did? Yes, before I went home. And Where was she? Interrupt, but I, we also have video of her acknowledging fault with the, the officer's body cam video. What is that? Um, they have a body cam on when he was talking to her when she said she's really sorry and she's going to pay the vet bill. Oh, may I see that, please? Oh, okay. And she, she jumped out of the car when she seen that little dog because I was getting ready to get in the car. And gotcha. Right on the corner here. Okay. So were they just across the street then? No, they were right here. They were just right here on yeah. the sidewalk. Okay. I'm really, I'm gonna pay the bill, I know. And whatever I gotta do. Yeah, so she's down at the clinic now. It was a bite on her, on the shoulder, I think. On the shoulder? Yeah. Okay. And he, she was just protecting me. Sure. That's all. And I'll pay the bill. Now you're responsible And I wanna apologize. So. Sure. I feel bad. I, I do feel bad about it. I do love dog, I'm a dog lover. And I do feel bad. And I believe she just said, the defendant just said that she was in the street when that happened. It was in my driveway that happened, Your Honor. But I'm just saying, we want to be honest. Was the dog, was your dog on a chain? 
My dog was on a chain, Your Honor. Another thing, I never got my side of the story added to that at all. It was all one-sided. The whole police report was one-sided, Your Honor. I didn't look at a police report, I madam. One right here. Just a second. I didn't look at a police report. I listened it's to your I listened to you. Yes, Your Honor. And I listened to your witness. Yes. And you and the witness that you brought told two divergent stories, two totally different stories. She was your witness. Yes. Easily confused, but she was your witness. And you should have prepared her better, consistent with what your answer was. Do you understand? Yes, Sean, I wasn't trying to... Very, very good. Okay. Pain and suffering, unfortunately, is not yours. If you had had injury to yourself, and I think that the law is a little crazy there, but we can gauge pain and suffering for an animal. Anyway, your vet bills were $435. Your Honor, we just added that just because, you know, I understand. blatant disregard and, sh and the dog's still out all oh, the time. Oh, no, excuse me. The total with tax was $441. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Out. This court is adjourned. It's been a struggle just because of how long it's been going on. It was a crazy day. The dog almost got to our dog's leg bone and broke it. Because the dog is always japping at my dog. It was pretty scary. So it surprised me that that happened. He was bleeding and everything. She's not vicious whatsoever. We ran him up to the hospital. The animal control never did in my house. I had a feeling that Judy would see right through her, so. I love dogs, and I felt sorry for the little dog. I'm happy about the settlement and how we got our money. I'm not even going to get on my soapbox with regard to dogs that are potentially dangerous. There's no question that this lady has a dog that she's had from a puppy, and she, the dog has never caused her any difficulty, but there's also no question that she lets that dog out without a leash. I mean, they had proof of different occasions of the dog out and about. After yeah, this after happened. after this incident. After this incident. So you can, I think that's also a great lesson, that you can feel bad and be an animal lover and want to take care of the bill, but if you don't take any subsequent remedial measures to fix your bad behavior that caused this great deal of injury, then I don't really believe you that you feel sorry or that you're a dog lover. Because, well, that's an, that's an interesting yeah. perspective. Yeah, I mean, you knew what you had to do to ensure the safety of the dogs and other people in your neighborhood, and you chose not to do that, so. After it had already yeah. had an incident. Exactly. At least one. mình sẽ có là 435 cộng 58 này Thì sẽ có 5 cộng 8 bằng 13 thì sẽ viết 3 nhóm 1 Và 5 cộng 3 bằng 8 thì sẽ thêm 1 là 9 và 4 đã xuống Vậy 435 cộng 58 sẽ bằng 493 Thì đây sẽ là một đáp án Một đáp án đúng mình sẽ điền đúng điền D vào bên cạnh Đó, đây sẽ là một đáp án đúng Thì với cái đáp án đầu tiên chúng mình sẽ biết là đúng thôi Thì video này đến đây là hết rồi Tạm biệt mọi người đây là một người tiếp theo của những uh, bài tập tiếp theo nhé.